Hey everyone, you're listening to the official podcast of 4PlayerNetwork.com. Check us out at that address for everything you need to know about our community, monthly giveaways, and nightly live streams. You can even support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash 4player. And last but not least, you can catch the live recordings of these podcasts every single Thursday night on our Twitch channel. We hope to see you there. Enjoy. Can we start so I can just can I can I yeah, yeah. go ahead Andrew, let's, start. So sick, man. let's let's do this we're st- welcome to the show everybody four player pod blah 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 okay let's talk about Star Wars for just a hot second okay because right. I I was gonna say this for my four player minute all right but fuck oh, it you're opening so, with this fucking I guess I get some, you started this shit we're you doing it shit. we're doing it live I I had decided I was gonna replay Jedi Fallen Order with several uh preconceived notions in my head one of which being i probably was going to decide like halfway through it that like okay yeah i really don't like this game and i have now convinced myself that i, I don't need i don't need to play survivor i don't need i don't you i don't ever I not gonna play survivor I don't dude i do but... i don't i don't think you remember how i don't want to say negative but like completely indifferent i was to fall in order when it first came out like mm-hmm. I, I, I was luke i remember best I remember and really that's kind of a buggy mess. At I mean, launch, it was right? a buggy mess, but like, I, I really don't think that's what I'm talking about here because I remember having conversations where I was like, I don't like these characters. I don't care about this story. I played the whole game, by the way. I played the whole game back in 2019. And when I was done, I was like, I okay, cool, I guess. Jaeger in, in Discord brought up that maybe I was, this was, suff- I was suffering from like, I was still a little angry about the rise of Skywalker. I don't remember which one came out first or whatever, but like they came out like a month apart. You're or angry. You couldn't, you know, I feel like peak podcast comedy would be if Chris Davis like had footage of you fucking up, like in that footage way back in the day and was just playing <laughs> it on loop here. Right Dude, now. I, I was, I probably as I was doing that again during this, as I was doing that during that, that sequence during this replay, that's all I could think about the entire time was how bad I fucked it up. The first time. Anyway, the I point like is that was one of the or- origins of you getting frustrated with your own footage, but whatever, go ahead. So nah, I think I think I appreciated that. But anyways, the point is I, I was like, I, I'm playing this mostly to, to remind myself that like, maybe I, I don't need to bother with this. Cause it's like 2023 is crazy. It's like, there's, there's a ton of shit to play. Like maybe I don't need to play Jedi survivor. I booted up, Jedi Fallen Order again, started playing it, and within like 30 minutes, I was like, okay, this is, I remember, this is pretty cool, I guess. And then I just kept going, and then like two hours into it, I was like, fuck, what was I smoking in 2019? This game is fucking amazing. And like, I I played, I I ended up, I ended up playing Jedi Fallen Order from start to finish. I played more of it this time than I did the first. I spent 22 hours playing this game for the the replay, and I almost 100% of the game, which I had zero intention. You've been playing on PC too, right? Yes, yeah, I'm playing on PC. So like you're playing an ironed out, smoothed out version of the game on like a beefy ass PC in 2023. Of course, still it's has a better experience. It's still, has that shit was buggy again, and kind of ran like shit back. You're in not the listening. Day. You're you're not listening because I don't think the bugs is what I'm referring to because there are still bugs in not it. Not just there bugs, still... performance, performance as well. Performance, yes, there's still performance issues with it. But what I'm saying is. Back in the day, I didn't care about the story. I didn't care about the characters. Those are, that's a big deal to me. It I played this game. I played this thing again, uh, and I was like, "That's one of the that's one of my favorite Star Wars stories." Period that I've played, like or seen or watched or whatever. Okay. Like it, well, it's how up far there. Did you get the first time? I pl- I, ple- I beat the game the first time. I pl- I've played this oh. game to completion twice. That's what so I'm saying. What that's what's smoking? weird. I don't fucking know, but now I, I finished. The, I the rolled characters credits. and story didn't change. I know that's what I'm talking about. I, I don't know. I, I don't Maybe know. It's like one of those like, things where you're like watching a movie for the second time and enjoy it more than the first because. Maybe, maybe like that perspective I, changes the way you think about it, or maybe you're looking at different things, you know? I mean, this, this kind of happened to me way back in the day with Halo 1. Like, the first I mean, time I played Halo of. 1, I had, I just did not like it. And then I played it again, like, a year and a half later, and I kind of fell in love with it. Well, so, so, I, don't I, don't, know, I don't know if yeah. Shader in chat is, t- is, is, that would be is a speaking good, the uh, truth. I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt myself. He says that I apparently tweeted that I hated Cal Kestis back in the day. He could be I don't know if he has receipts or if that's real or not, but I wouldn't put it past myself. But like I don't, 
Nick say all, all, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, I was I was half play, replaying this game to convince myself to not play the sequel, and it now the sequel is probably one of my most anticipated games of the year, and it's installed on my PS5 now. I'm ready to go. Mm. <laughs> so like, mm. it's crazy. It's crazy. Anyways, mm. welcome to Four Player Podcast, everybody. This is episode 753. It's April 27th, 2023. My name is Nick Henderson. I'm joined tonight by Brad Simons. Hello. You know, I think that might be a good top three, right? Like games that you didn't like the first time, but then you played them again like a crazy person. Because why would you I mean, play I already again? one of them figured out because this is definitely one of the most glaring it. examples of that for me, for sure. I just never replay games, so I guess I couldn't really contribute much. I, I really started replaying that with the expectation that like I'm I'm gonna start playing this, but it's not gonna matter much because I'm probably gonna That's put it down too. pretty quick. Because I mean, on your replay of Red Dead Redemption Two, you realize that game was actually butt, right? Finally, yes, it totally, totally. I, it's it's no longer in my top ten games of all time. Also, uh, like anyways, Red Dead Redemption Two intro. on Windows came out ten days before uh, Fallen Order, so maybe that influenced you a little bit. I don't know. Could be. Could. Well, oh, nah. Wait, wait. Oh, you mean the PC version? No. Yes. No, no, no. Anyways, let me get through this introduction. Crispy is joining us as well. Hello, Crispy. Hello, Nick. I am very glad that you've had a change of heart about Fallen Order. Um, Andor's pretty cool, too. Yeah, Andor's pretty cool. Uh, I'm like five episodes in, I think. Yeah. It's great. Wait, you're watching God, Andor? Nick. You guys, yes. I told you. No. We no, just hyped no, about no, a dumb what? show. Bro. Brad, listen to me. I started watching Andor after I finished my playthrough of Fallen okay, Order. Okay, fair, fair, fair. Sorry. Um, Sorry. I just remember back in the day when you said you didn't like it, like being so taken aback. Like, I don't <gasps> understand what, what, what I was smoking. Like, I literally it's, didn't it's get it. Such a, it's such a Nick game. Oh, I do it's such a receipts. <laughs> Dude, I wonder if you I, even really disliked it. I bet. No, I mean, like I said, I. I don't think I was overtly negative, but I was lukewarm at best. Like, it just didn't resonate with me. I remember thinking to myself, I don't like Seer. I don't like Grease. I barely like Cal. I don't give a shit about Trilla, the vil- like the villain. And now I'm just like, these insane. villains are awesome. Insane. I know, it's fucking insane. insane. Like, it's fucking insane. I was smoking crack. I don't know what's going on. Anyways, Chris Davis is here. Hello, Chris Davis. I, I think I figured it out. Uh, Death what? Stranding came out the week before. No, it has nothing to do. With <laughs> no, I I remember you saying something to the effect of, "Why am I playing Fallen Order when I could play be playing Death Stranding right now?" That's true. That's you, you, true. That, but like that doesn't change the fact that I played all the way through Fallen Order. Like, what are you talking no, about? No, I'm telling you, Ko- Kojima was reprogramming your brain. You know, your your understanding of what a game could be was changing was being, at the time. I was being hit. And then you played some mid ass mm-hmm. Star Wars game, and you're like, "This is just some. This is just what a, Dark Souls." I I I, I no, well, I think it's, I, 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 Dude, as someone who likes Metroid and Dark Souls, yeah, and the like, ponchos are fucking cool, man. Okay, I'm tired. I'm sick of hearing about the ponchos. I love the ponchos. I love the ponchos too myself, but uh, I don't love the ponchos. Anyways, anyway, yeah, well, it's you know, it's it's, it's a bad it's, reward. It's a bad reward. I mean, I mean, here's the thing: all the rewards in Fallen Order are cosmetic, right? Like you can put a new and paint job new on your one. shit. And the new one, I think, but you get beards and shit. Yeah, you yeah, get yeah. beards and haircut. You can make him look like a real fucking scuzzy Rugged. bastard. Like, yeah. like a real fucking redneck good old boy. Like, <laughs> Dude, I'm so fucking excited. But you know what? I saw, the funny a, thing I is saw a clip where he unlocked a, like a man bun. Like yes. a... Like a I'm like, this is not all about this. A Jedi. Dude, I'm a... into it. I'm I'm fucking into it. What Wasn't do you mean a Jedi, Jedi with a man bun? Dude, fucking Obi-Wan Kenobi had a man bun in the fucking yeah. movies. Like, what are you talking about? Which um, one? In the prequels. The prequels. Like, like I think I think that one yeah, of the first yeah. times you see you see Obi-Wan Kenobi in the in like the in the Phantom Menace, I think he has a man bun. I don't remember. The point is, you know it's, it's ridiculous. Oh. We've already talked about Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order like for five minutes here, oh. but like we're not even really? talking about Star Wars Survivor tonight. We're talking about that's next week. That's next week's business. Mm. So let's yeah, get to it. About Star Wars. Uh, I am going to play so Survivor. Little little bit of housekeeping this week. I just want to remind everybody uh, that the Revival Club is back up and running. We're playing Final Fantasy VI. Um, you, I was going to stream. You? No, I'm playing. I'm playing mostly on my lunch break and I'm streaming it. So I'm kind of moving kind of oh. slow, but I am playing it. Uh, and I am going on a trip next week. So I will definitely be uh, I will definitely be playing that while I'm traveling. Um, it's a pretty good game. It's a pretty good game. But if you're interested in joining and and playing along, talking about it with the community, you can support us on Patreon at the three dollar tier or higher, or you can subscribe to us on Twitch. Either way, it'll get you access 
to the channel where we're talking about it. Um, I also want to let everybody know that if you like our show, you should please leave us a review wherever it is that you get our po- you get podcasts if they allow such a thing. Um, so yeah, whether it's you know Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts or whatever, leave us a rating and review. We'd really appreciate it. it helps us out. Um, and lastly, Fantasy Critic update. It's been uh, last week. We didn't do a regular podcast last week. Last week we did our top three games. We would like to see a 32. We would watch a 32 part documentary about that title rolls right off the tongue, but it was a good show. Good conversations. Go check it out. Uh, Obviously inspired by Double Fine's Psych Odyssey documentary that uh, Brad has been trying to convince everybody to watch. So go check it out. It was good. Good. Good talk. Um, But yeah, fantasy critic updates. Uh, not a ton this week, but uh, <laughs> it's the long before the storm. No. Tragedy. No, Tragedy. pretty good week. Okay, actually. All right. So yeah, actually, it's been a little bit of a week. War Tales, which is on Brad's uh, roster, has not quite garnered enough reviews to even rank on Open Critic. But it looks like when it finally does cross that threshold, it'll be a pretty solid pick. Um, yes. so we're still no, kind of waiting the, on that. The, the tragedy was Age of Wonders 4, which I've been, I've been in people's DMs for weeks talking about this game. I've, I've been eyeing this one for a very long time, and I was gonna I don't bid even on it which tonight. Game it is. Don't worry about it, it's not a Nick game. I was gonna bid on oh. that shit tonight, and the reviews dropped early. I was gonna bid on it last week actually, but I just got real wait, busy. Man, you can't wait on and shit. Was not was not really paying attention. <laughs> well, I don't. I didn't expect the reviews to drop a week early, but I mean, I guess that makes sense. And now I can't bid on it, and it's reviewing really well. But I kind of expected it to review very well. I just didn't. Uh, yeah. I I mean, I just missed it. It's frustrating because that was. The it's point. only it's only April. There's still plenty of time, but. Uh, and we're going to be talking Fuck about you, war. Dude. It's an 85 on open critic. And that was my plan. And now it's gone. I don't care about what else is coming out. It's hard to get a fucking 85. You, you, you goofed. What kind of, what, what do you want me to say? We will be talking about war tales tonight, right, Brad? In the, in the impressions. Yeah. You can, yeah. Okay. So you haven't playing that. Um, maybe, maybe you can submit this podcast as a review and you'll. <laughs> no, I mean, it. it has enough reviews, but it has to have like top critic like reviews. It, top critic reviews you know like on rotten tomatoes they have top critics i guess open critics trying to do something like that and it's just stupid. critics with legitimacy or, is what you're saying not there, us there, well no there are there are one well, again it's I, don't know, I think it's kind of arbitrary it's just the ones that people kind of know right. but there are reviews enough reviews from top top critics but two of those top critics are unscored review sites and they yeah. don't count towards the score but i feel like it should still count towards the game getting a score at all so i don't know it's just really yeah. unfortunate it's unfortunate um also we have the last case of benedict fox kind of snuck up on us there's no there's only one review so far that's on crispy's list yeah, that, that's that's just a floof the, that game will get plenty of reviews yeah yeah yeah. no i i know but uh, well, right now the, it's an 85 it's baby a, no, it's, it's a it's a zero is what it is it's an 85 it's an bam 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 it's an, it's an 85 right now but let me yeah. tell you i looked at i looked fucking... at the user reviews on steam which maybe was a mistake yeah i don't know uh, there's a bunch of fucking nerds uh. like not one of those people had played the game for more than an hour which okay fine i don't yeah. give a fuck what those nerds think I agree. I agree. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. Um, but also, it's coming, Carlos, baby. Carlos is obviously not here to talk about this, but he, again, we are going to do a, a, a fantasy critic show kind of in the middle of the year. We'll have Carlos on. But Star Wars Jedi Survivor, 86, baby, <laughs> so far, uh, with like 90 something reviews. So that's that's looking pretty, pretty good. Um, so, that, you know, that pulled him in 16 points, which is nice. Uh, and we don't have any bids this week and no pickups since our last time we talked about this. So not a lot more to go into detail I there. I can bid this week. God damn it. But we uh, did get, you know, Armored Core. Black. Armored Core Armored 6. Armored Core 6 got a release date. Fires August Rubicon 25. got a new trailer. Yeah. Looks like an Armored Core game. Oh my God. It looks sick. Pretty. It looks like the realized. game people are waiting for. It looks I totally like... just realized I trapped my cat in my closet. I... <laughs> She's wow. scratching to get out. Whoops. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah. So you know, Armored Core looks pretty sick. The and, world is ready. Uh, it's time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Still, somebody, coming out this year. Somebody in our Discord. Oh, it was Prince. I remember Chris. 
Prince said something about like if Armored Core comes out in 2023, he'll like put Crispy's name in his hashtag or whatever for like a oh, month. Yeah. And I don't think he's delivered on that promise yet, but calling him out. He's in chat right now. Um, mm. Oh, oh, we did have two pickups since last time we talked about it because I, I thought this was hilarious. I'm sure this was Brad that instigated this, but like because we had the big the whole big kerfuffle about like he put 3D Mario in play and I got it. And then this then last week he put unannounced 2D Mario platformer in play mm, and crispy. I didn't do that. Nolan, did Nolan, Nolan did it. Nolan did that. Oh yeah. shit. Well, Nolan put it in play. Crispy snagged it up. Uh and then but see. Nolan also picked up Rift of the Necro Dancer. You know, pretty I mean that's a Nolan game. He he deserves that. That is a Nolan game all in what all he the way. Uh, uh yeah, Chris Davis doesn't understand competition but that's yeah, okay, it's okay. <laughs> Look, i understand I'm... that we all want to get the highest possible games at whatever but like he just wants his friends to succeed <laughs> I, w- I want everyone to be happy that okay that is that is that too much <laughs> what's important to chris Brad. davis is that i'm not second to last but actually last <laughs> and that's the only thing he that's the only thing he wants to happen in this league that's all i care victory. about as long as i don't come in last i'm happy Actually, that's not all Chris Davis cares about. I learned today that Chris Davis has it in for the hey, developers of for that um, the alien game. game. Chris oh Davis my is, god! What's, Wait, that, what? what's that dude's name? The what's X-Files that dude's game? name? Like Kevin? Kevin? Or what's that dude's name in the yearbook? It's not. It's not enough that I should succeed; others should fail. Uh, like, <laughs> Chris Davis's picture. What? It's. It's not enough that I should succeed. Brad should fail. <laughs> I'm like, what? that's fucking yeah, funny um but yeah no, no chris davis chris davis came out strong against the developers of the gray hill incident today which is just a silly looking I come out against the developers of the gray hill dude you incident. came out, hard. I came out came against, against the gray hill experiment itself it's the bad. gray hill incident get it right. and and here's here's what i find fascinating you watch the trailer for the gray hill incident <laughs> apparently chris davis thinks that game is taking itself totally seriously <laughs> At that game looks if it's not taking Dude, itself seriously, it then that's just the joke it, went right you know, over your head. It's, it's things like the Grey Hill incident that are making light of this man's what? life's work. Is this <laughs> is this a sixty nine dollar and ninety nine cents video here. game? That's Do that's you, a big question guys, I have. I forgot about Chris Davis hates Yarny, supports open carry. I forgot about that shit. <laughs> okay, that shit. Oh my god. Chris Davis Why hates Yarny, hates the Grey Hill incident, which is not even out yet, by the way. He hates, he hates Yarny like Brad hates fucking Neil Druckmann. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. OK, uh, is there anything else I'm missing related to the fantasy critic? I don't think so. I just want to remind everybody uh, it came up in Discord this week, whatever. I think I think people should remember that we actually don't really give a shit about scores. I think I think some people think that we are only doing this because we're legitimately interested. Uh, we we consider the scores of video games in the media as like the be all end all of of like what's good and what's bad. And I hope it's obvious to everybody who listens to this show that that's not the case. I mean, we've been doing a podcast for God's sakes for twelve plus years or Nick, more. You're, at this you're, point. you're explaining a fantasy league like people have played fantasy football for I don't know fucking decades. Like. You I don't know. need to explain it to people. It's no, a game, I, I don't. You know. I mean, some people apparently need to explain because some people are taking it, treating it like we are doing this because oh we. Oh my god! Think what Chris matters. Davis is the dude who plays fantasy football and just drafts all the players from like his home team, not really <laughs> understanding that you're trying to win the league. He just really loves the Texans, so he's just gonna, you know, draft a bunch of Texans. First off, no one loves the Texans. Second. Like, then why do I have, like, fucking Lego 2K Drive and Tekken 8 on my list? I don't know. You seem really excited about that Lego game. Yeah. Yeah. Davis, you can, I, you I really prove... thought you were going to play that. No, you can I prove know. everybody I, wrong. Saying. You can prove you everybody made, wrong when some Journey 3 is announced. And you... Or whatever, but you do have the random comment that seems a little, like, you knew, you do know how this works, right? But, yeah. Chris Davis, you can prove us all wrong when Yarny 3 is announced and you draft that to your roster. Just Yarny saying. Three would be a solid pickup. What is, By the what way, is the game? title of the game is Unraveled. It's not Unraveled. Thank you. I mean, I couldn't fucking get, remember what it's called. Get your fucking facts together, man. I don't. I don't. I don't have facts. Okay, we're moving on. 
Uh, that's all I got uh, for housekeeping and whatnot this week. And and, and so, but we're we're gonna we're gonna jump right into some headlines here. It's been an interesting week. And then in the second segment, of course, we'll do impressions. We'll talk about Horizon uh, Forbidden West Burning Shores. I can't believe I have to say that whole thing. I should just say Burning Shores. We'll talk about Street Fighter VI, the demo for that, War Tales, Advance Wars. we got some good stuff in the second segment. But headlines, the week in video games. Uh, let's go. All right. I'm going to start with this because it's like maybe the most boring headline of the week, but also perhaps the most like earth shattering. <laughs> Uh, apparently the UK has blocked Microsoft's planned acquisition 69 billion dollar purchase of Activision Blizzard they've 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 blocked it and what was the reason they cited it was okay, kind of weird it, it, it's it kind of weird. weird and it's it's a little I would say cringy is maybe the thing because like obviously everyone's like oh my god they're blocking it hooray they're our heroes and then all of a sudden it, you read into it a little bit more and it's like because they're concerned about the impact the acquisition would have on the cloud gaming space yeah uh, Which, you know, oh yeah well I mean the thing is like they can't just block it without some no reason some mm-hmm. reason like yeah, you have to like, you have to yeah. submit you have to submit some reason right um for that but i mean they 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 claim that they want to prevent microsoft from having a dominant presence in the growing cloud gaming market a a market in which they've spent like the past two months signing deals with so many different cloud services for those games mm-hmm. so like Maybe what? regulators over there also just think that like cloud gaming is just video uh, games. Brad, are you okay why, did, why did Brad just freeze like that? <laughs> that was really good. The grays, the grays got him. <laughs> he's getting fox he's molders. Back. He's, okay, back. he's back. He's 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 moving now. But um But here's yeah, the thing. I mean, so it's... Microsoft is going to appeal this. But here's yeah, the course. problem are we with talking about Microsoft. Acquisition of Blizzard. Did you not hear any of that, Brad? You like to know. Or like, did you? Did we get? Did we freeze out? Oh my god! He left the call. He's gone. Oh, hold on. Talk for just a second. He's gone. He's gone. Back. This is so riveting. Hello. Dead air. I'm back. What happened? Oh my god. Okay. Uh, I don't know. You you dropped out of the call. Are yeah. you, are you are we good? Can we continue talking about this boring mm-hmm. Microsoft acquisition, please? I'm here. I'm so, so fucking so here, bored. Here's the thing. So Microsoft is going to appeal this, but the problem is the appeals process works is that if the ruling body looks at the appeal and approves a second review, it doesn't go to a separate independent CMA team. It goes back to the exact same team that reviewed it in the first place. Right. Okay. And evidently there are that. some parties at Microsoft right. and more specifically Activision who are burning bridges over this shit. Oh, mm. sick. Yeah. Like, so, so they could they could bribe them or something? I don't know. I mean, there's, there go. there's oh, probably going to have to be some concessions made. Have yeah. they thought about doing corruption? <laughs> I mean, it's, it, is, it is the British government, so, like, it might work. Um... I mean, what what do we think? We think this is ultimately going to end up going through, or is this like the kiss? Yeah, do we think this it, is like the yeah. it's it's going to go through? I think uh, they're just going to have to make some more significant concessions here. They're going to have the, to grease the wheels a little bit. For this they'll they'll sign more deals with other cloud services, and they will they might spin off a couple of studios out out of the deal and let them go independent. It'll be I don't know. Like I, I can imagine a scenario where if it if push came to shove, they would they would make a big cut like maybe even Blizzard. They might cut Blizzard. Whoa, Chris what? Davis what? says they're gonna cut Blizzard. Do they you might think cut Activision Blizzard. is gonna like cut Somebody Blizzard. Somebody clip off that. Wait, 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 wait. You think Activision is gonna like saw off their own leg, which is Blizzard, and and then like separate them, <laughs> themselves Didn't from they it? Spend so like a billion dollars Blizzard? to buy Blizzard. Wait, Blizzard? can you can companies can companies like that unmerge for the sake of another yeah. merger? No, yeah, they, they they can they can one hundred percent be required by law or or a statute in the in the agreement to as soon as they merge they have to spin off a a a team or or developer they can absolutely do that. 
I, I just, I point to Blizzard because I know Diablo 4 is coming out. Everyone's looking forward to that. Everyone is very excited for it. But evidently, Blizzard is in very bad shape right now. And Diablo 4 is going to I mean, end up being maybe a, a, a make or break moment for them for the next several years. What does make or break mean? Like Diab- Diablo um, 4 is already successful enough, I'm sure. Like what, so, what is the concern Yeah, but they, they are having such they are having such staffing problems over there. People are just leaving in, in droves because of the requirement for to return to the office that their producers are developing crisis maps to figure out exactly what they can ship and what they can't. Um, I don't know. I don't know I'm... about all this business stuff. As long as Diablo ends up being like an 86 because of this, uh, that's what matters. Oh yeah. That would be the worst, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh my God, Brad, you always manage uh... to do it. You always manage to do it. Anyways. I mean, here's the thing. We, we don't need to talk more about it. I mean, it's going to, what's going to happen is going to happen. And just going to go don't... through. It's gonna something is gonna happen to, to to make it go through, and also you gotta remember like, regardless of the Diablo thing, like Blizzard also is like I would imagine Blizzard is still perfectly fine because of like having all of that World of Warcraft, like World of Warcraft, still one of the most successful fucking. <laughs> Am I anymore. wrong? I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, I guess it's I mean, doing better than EverQuest it, too, or whatever. But yeah, I mean, you know, it, it costs a lot of money to run it too, so I don't know. But yeah, like That's o- fair. Overwatch fine. has We're... been not doing so well. World of Warcraft is slowly dying down. Look, Diablo 4 is going to sell like 30 million copies. They're going to be fine. Of course it will. Of course it will. I know. Uh, I don't think World of to... Warcraft. Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I don't think World of Warcraft is like slowly dying down. They're still like putting out expansions yeah. and shit. Oh no, and they there's are. no I'm way talking about the players. There's base. no way that like the World of Warcraft team or infrastructure is like as intense as it was 10 years ago. No, I am talking like, about the player base. I'm not about not talking about the game. No, game I know, but what I'm saying is with that shrinking those. player base, it's probably like I like yeah, I don't know. I don't know what we're what talking about. We this talking is talking about how this is stupid. Not... And and Persuade makes another it's... good point is that Blizzard I mean, Activision no. is in trouble with China right now because yeah, their Netties deal fell apart. Yeah, they're fighting. It's sick. Yeah. Okay. Looking sick. We'll, we'll circle back around to this when something actually transpires. Um, all right. Next, I want to talk a little bit about Remedy. Because... Oh, those guys who make third-person shooters? You, sh- you shut up. You shut up, Crispy. <laughs> You're the one who just bumped it off your top ten list. I hate yeah, them. that's I true. No such thing. I, hate them. I did no such thing. I hate them. Um, I'll but, never but forgive was, them. Remedy, uh, and I, they've been doing this a few times lately. Uh, they've been releasing just like kind of development roadmaps or like updates for like all for all of their projects, I, which I'm really enjoying. They have like this this new like mantra of transparent. There's also kind of a side headline. They've released they updated their logo for the first time uh, ever, which is interesting. So I got like 2023 well, it's, it's for their, Remedy. It, it's part of their quarterly financial reports. They they have to disclose a, a good measure of that. Right, but they're also like turning. They're just straight up at this point, turning those those reports into like public facing <laughs> updates. Right, they're yeah. like, which is not a lot of companies do. Like they they produce these updates for their shareholders or whatever, so they can review that stuff. And then they're just like, now let's turn around and reveal the same exact same information to the public, which I'm digging. Um, it gives you it kind of gives you an idea of where they stand on a lot of their projects because we know we they have a lot of stuff uh, in the oven right now. Uh, so they gave us updates on all of their major projects, and they confirmed, they reaffirmed that Alan Wake 2 is on track to release later this year. Like, that's, that's exciting. I'm super I mean, it is, but that. I didn't realize that we had a Rockstar game coming out the same day as well, like, you know, in 2023. Are you, tr- are you making a joke about Alan Wake 1 releasing the same day as Red Dead Redemption? Yes, I am. Oh, is that, is that why you're theorizing that Grand Theft Auto 6 is coming out this year secretly? I, I theorize next year for that. Why don't you go bid on Grand Theft Auto 6 if you're so confident? Mm, yeah. uh, I would if I didn't think Davis. it was coming out next year. It would come out or the maybe same bid on day the next, as... uh, Killer Instinct game or something. Oh, yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, so they reaffirm Alan Wake 2 is on track for release this year, um, which I, I think just kind of goes in in it goes in line with like what they've been saying about uh, 
or just kind of their approach. Like they've been very vocal this year. They've been talking about a lot of projects. They've updated their branding. They're tweeting a lot more than they did the last like two years combined. Like they're just they're ramping up to something. And it seems to me like Alan Wake 2 is 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 the thing that they're putting their money on this year and that they want it to be a big a big deal in 2023 so that's exciting control 2 as a parent actually all three of their projects control 2 project condor which is like that multiplayer control thing and the the remakes for max Payne have all entered the proof of concept stage so those all seem very kind of distant future which again kind of reemphasizes that like most of their development efforts are focused on Alan Wake 2 and getting that out the door. But uh, I think Control 2 is supposed to be next in line after that, followed by Project Condor and Max Payne, which I think are being developed kind of simultaneously. So they got a lot of stuff coming. Yeah, Co- Condor, they, they'd signed the deal for several years ago. Like, I'd, I'd figure they'd be much further along by now. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of these other projects are, like... They're not like the biggest studio. I don't. I don't know what their their employee account is. They're not the biggest studio, but like they haven't. They have enough people that they can be like focusing on. They can have like four or five different projects going at once. But like outside of whatever they're focusing on, those other projects probably have like small teams of like ten or fifteen people, just kind of like getting the process started in the conceptualizing stages and all that stuff so that when one releases, they shift all their development focus oh, to the I'm, next one. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, so Condor was their deal with five Oh five Vanguard mm-hmm. is the deal that they have with Tencent. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, also I don't fair in chat saying something about Max Payne. Did I, I don't know if I, did I say that wrong or something? Max Payne one and two are both being remade. That's that's what I was alluding to is yeah. the fourth, the fourth project. Farrakhan. Bro. For Rackin, sorry, my bad. For Rackin, um, Nick, did you right, ever move. play Crossfire X? No, I did not. That that uh, was the the game that had Remedy making the campaign. We are getting yeah, into uh, the weeds. <laughs> yeah, um, I will play. What's the name of the game you just asked me about? Crossfire oh, X. Remember. Crossfire X. I will play Crossfire X if you that? play. If you play, the uh, it's a remedy. Set. It's a remedy game. The single player campaign is is remedy. It's fucking terrible. Nobody likes it. It's trash. Crossfire. Move on. Is it a third it's person trash. shooter? It's really bad. It's trash. Is it a third person shooter? No, it's first person that. shooter. Oh, I fucking hate you, Remedy. <sighs> <laughs> That's okay. Remedy hates you too, Crispy. Uh, uh, Tango GameWorks. There's actually been quite a bit of news this week regarding Tango GameWorks. You know Tango GameWorks. We love them. They made The Evil Within. Shinji Mikami was the head of the studio. Um, they made the evil within two, obviously, and they just released High Five Rush this year, which is a uh, uh, I, w- I would say I would honestly say is a surprise con- game of the year contender. That game is mm-hmm. fucking sick. Um, game but there's been the a, there's been a little shit. There's been a few like competing headlines, I suppose, because Jeff Grubb said something on his podcast about how it's his understanding that High Five Rush did not uh, perform to expectations. It was not a f- financial success um there's a lot of actually there's actually a lot of backlash about his phrasing of that and like what's his evidence or whatever and he he had to clarify because the other part of this headline is that apparently microsoft is ramping up is is increasing the size of tango gameworks considerably brad's gone again um (laughs) increasing the size of tango gameworks by by adding 30 new positions at the studio which signifies that they must be doing something right um, but, you know, Grubb had to kind of backpedal a little bit on his statement and say he had to clarify he didn't really know what Microsoft, like how Microsoft gauges success with a project like this. Yeah. Um, so it's not, it may not be as simple as like it didn't sell very well. It was also, it was also on Game Pass. So it's like, you know, it's kind of hard to tell, um, you know, how that impacts sales versus like how, how does that cut into profits and all that stuff. So who the fuck knows how that, all that works out, but they're expanding the size of the studio, which is cool. Um, and uh, I this is also uh, maybe, I, maybe I'm uh-huh. like, maybe I kind of like misunderstood what Jeff Grubb was saying that people took issue with, but like, what are the odds that Microsoft measures the success of a game in anything other than sales versus budget? I mean. 
Microsoft has had such a reputation over the past like generation of games as like not having games, <laughs> like not mm-hmm. having, you know. And I, I, I don't know what if there's like a business equivalent of this where you measure success in like in terms of like buzz or people okay, talking so like, or like reputation. So then the game comes out, and then they check and see how many people sign up for Game Pass or something. I mean, maybe, but That's like. So- I, 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 I'm also I'm I'm more like alluding to the fact that like they just haven't had a lot of positive buzz about Microsoft as a whole having a lot of fresh IP, having a lot of stuff that people are interested in that's not also available on a bunch of other platforms. And the the, the old PS3 has no games meme is starting to feel very applicable right now. Yes, mm. but it, I mean I feel I feel like it's felt applicable for a while to Microsoft. Everybody talks about Microsoft not having a lot and Hi-Fi, Ru- Hi-Fi Rush is just like one of those surprise projects that like everybody was talking about that suddenly is like it's this experience you can only play on on PC or yeah. Xbox and yeah. and like that is be- that's thanks to Tango Gameworks and I don't know if there- I don't know if you could realistically measure success in any other way other than financials but like I'm just wondering if that's kind of what he's alluding to is like, maybe it wasn't a financial success, but it garnered them a lot of, of like it it helped their reputation in that regard. So like to them, it was, it was successful. Yeah. I I, I, I agree with what you're saying. I I think for me, like what you're saying about like their reputation as a company that does matter. But I sometimes wonder if maybe like, I sometimes wonder if maybe, like, we assume that they're playing a deeper game than they really are. Like, like how many of these companies really think that they can foster, a, like, overly positive image with their consumer base and don't just, like, put all of their decision-making into bottom-line sales? Yeah. No, yeah, you know? you're I don't absolutely know. right. I mean, we might and, be yeah, giving them knows? too much credit. <laughs> but, it, but there is, it is, I mean, I, I never... Even when I was playing Hi-Fi Rush and I was like, this game's amazing, I was just thinking about how the fact like they kind of sent it to die by putting it, like, shadow dropping it on Game Pass, which, you know, no, is... Look, 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 look. The, the thing is, both Grub and, you know, Microsoft and Tango can be right, right? Because I'm sure the expectations for that game were in the fucking toilet. Like, prob- like financially and probably critically. Obviously, they didn't think much of it. They didn't market it at all. You know, the shadow drop thing is not something you do when you're planning on something being big, but it doesn't matter. Even if it blew away everybody's expectations uh, financially and critically, which I'm sure it did. And it harbored so much like goodwill towards Microsoft when everyone was so down on them because like they didn't ship a fucking real first party game in the entire year before pretty much like it also probably didn't make Microsoft a ton of money. It's not like Xbox is going to survive with a game like Hi-Fi Rush. So if you heard something about it going like, well, you know, it's whatever, it's it, probably it, accurate as well. The only thing that makes this strange is that because I totally I, like I'm I'm under the same assumption that you just spoke to, but. Like at the end of the day, they're increasing the size of the studio. Like they're yeah, they're, of course, they're put... of course, because they realize there's fucking talent there. There were there were probably like, but, know, but if, that's if where the, that's where the contra- bombed. But that's where the contradiction comes into play because even if it, it garnered them goodwill, if it didn't, if it wasn't a financial success, turning around and putting a bunch of new jobs but into it no, seems Xbox, like a, big, a no. bit of a risk. Xbox needs first party games, and they need games that they need first party studios that actually ship fucking games. And yeah. and uh, and they just shipped two of them in the past year. Like yeah. none of their first party studios are shipping anything. They need studios that can get games out, and Tango can, and they just shipped like one of the best games of the year. It's not surprising oh, at all more, that they're more, investing money in them. More pointless business speculation, but do you think that maybe like Microsoft had a uh, uh, like lump of money that they dog eared for rapid first party development, and we're just kind of like waiting to see which studio like Ooh, that, showed that showed the initiative, and they were like, "Oh, Tango, you guys, you guys won." I, like, you know, I could, I could see it going possible. the other way that's completely. Feasible. I could see it going the other way completely because the if if this game had came out and like bombed or like was critically meh like Ghostwire was 
um, I could see it have been going the other direction and then really kind of putting the chopping block down on Tango. It, they just sort of lucked out because right right when uh, Hi-Fi Rush was kind of blowing up, it was like, you know, a week later, that's when Microsoft started firing like fucking so many thousands of people, um, including like Xbox stuff. So honestly, oh. I'm just glad that this game came out because I really like Tango. And I Did think we talk about this worse. last month or in February, because I don't remember talking about it, but like Shinji Mikami's leaving the studio or he's already. Yeah, we talked, about, no, we talked about it. We talked okay, about I it. I couldn't, I couldn't remember. Um, yeah, I mean, he, he's been trying to get out of like running projects for for years, yeah. really. Yeah, his, uh, his whole thing with Evil with Tango one. was to set up the next generation of developers. And yeah, then I remember. That. Okay, out. you're right. Yeah, I remember that. Is, you're right. I, don't know. I mean, you, you, they say that. I mean, right? He did that with Resident Evil, but then he did Resident Evil Four. So I don't know. Who, who knows? Um, but yeah, I guess he's good. And, and the, the last bit of Tango news, like I said, a lot of Tango headlines this week is that. Apparently, their next project that they're already working on it has el- multiplayer elements, which, you know, whatever. You can, what, I don't know what we can glean from that. It's kind of disappointing in the sense that, like, God, I was hoping they would turn tail or, like, turn, like, pivot back towards, like, Evil Within 3 or something. Uh, and maybe that's still happening. And maybe this is just another one of these, like, smaller side projects, kind of like. They are Hi-Fi a multi team studio. Was. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a big studio now. And they just did a massive update to Ghostwire. I don't know. They got a lot of just, kind of like Remedy. They have a lot of, you know, what, hey, hey, a lot evil, of things going uh, on. Mr. Papa shot in chat says evil within mercenaries. That would be I mean, pretty good. It, that would be it. that would be cool as a mode in evil within three. That's They're what hiring I, multiplayer developers. That's concerning. I don't like I mean, it, it's happens. not really it's not really, you know, you know what? The first thing I thought of when I saw Tango working on multi a multiplayer game was I was like, this kind of smells like, like Ninja Theory making that 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 multiplayer yeah. shooter that or everybody Platinum. forgot about. You know, like 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 I am not anti like a studio doing multiplayer stuff when they're like good at it and that's what they're like you know known for. But like I, mean, I get studios wanting to like, try it, but like I don't know. We've seen know. that like fail so miserably, you know, like, ugh, like that let yeah. it die multiplayer game. Like, come on, uh, man. they're just wasting their. That was time. particularly they knew, bad. They just like they knew that yeah. shit wasn't gonna be. Successful. I still follow their Twitter account, and they still post stuff and get like one or two like like. Uh, all they had uh, to do was make let it die too. That's all they had to do. All they had to do was, like, do was let it die. No, I wonder. Like to let it die. I wonder if like there's some other market somewhere that like really picked up on that game. Uh-huh. Like maybe like people in China play a shit ton of maybe, but death verse or no. whatever. No, I'm guessing no. But yeah. Uh... All right. Uh, and the the next headline we actually already kind of talked about. I just threw it on here cause last because it was news today about Armored Core Six getting a release date. We already really? mentioned it. August twenty fifth, twenty twenty three, baby, and you know what? It looks like it's an eighty five. It looks like Armored Core. Uh, the people I don't are know, ready. I mean, you know, this is going to be my first Armored Core game because, of course, I'm going to play it. You know, at this point, you know, it's a from software wait, game. Wait, wait, wait. It, it's pretty. It what what would cool. get you to not play it? That's my question. Uh, <laughs> bad reviews. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know. This. What, this what, for... what are bad reviews? What if it gets like a seventy three? I mean, here's here's the thing, Brad. So you have said this play a fucking seventy three. I know how you feel. No, about dude. Japanese. What are you game. talking what about? What if it's like really racist, Nick? <laughs> Let me ask you this: Are you going to play Dead Island too? At some point, eventually. Not not right now, and not here, for here's seventy the thing. bucks or whatever. I've been it is. like, I've been like, very like, why does this fucking game exist? And then it comes out, and people are like, oh, you know, people are, you know, I think I think people are a little like pissed off that I'm like kind of anti dead island 2 existing right which is fine because you're all like you know stop being mean to this little zombie game this <laughs> that game already sold over like a million copies Here, here's the thing how do you feel about the fact that this is outselling the dead space remake is your stupid little useless zombie game still cool it ain't cool anymore that's fucked up that's fucked up are you asking me how i feel about yeah, it outselling how do you feel dead about space? that uh, Wait, chris davis I mean, are we talking about armored core <laughs> Yeah, no, like, what's happening that, right what's now? Good about Dead that Island Two outselling oh. Dead the Dead Space remake. That's fucked up. Covers, Dead how, Island Two. I don't know anything about that. And, and you you get more Dead Island games, you freaks. That's fucked this, up. 
Brad, we're not going to get any more Dead Island games. Like, it's a miracle of Dead Island. Of course you fucking will. This thing is selling like crazy. But it took them like a decade to make it. Dude, what I remember they seeing... Do? Start a new franchise? Dude, they I saw Dead Island 2... I saw Dead Island 2 like, at, e, at like E3 2014 yeah, or something. Were, this game wasn't an active fucking development for 10 plus years. I know. It was, a, it was being developed by Saber Interactive when I first saw it. <laughs> Because it is um, selling so decently, and the fact that te- the technology evidently works, decent. Oh, like decent. I think it's more than reasonable for us to expect a sequel. Okay, that's fine. Well, I think I this is a this is going to be THQ. Hey, like, okay, I hey, that space hey, dies and this hey, lives. Shut up! We're talking about Armored Core. <laughs> that's true. How did we get on the Armored Core Six? Is coming this out, out, baby. Brad. I'm going to become. I'm gonna be like Chris Davis's with fucking Ace Combat or whatever. Like, Armored you have gonna be AC my Ace Armored Combat. Core. I have no, AC, Ace Combat. Ace Combat has always there reviewed well. <laughs> Ace Armored Core is not. You're the meme though, right? What's the meme? The guy who's like, oh so yeah, I Armored love Armored Core. Core. <laughs> Can't wait to play my first one. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love you, Armored Core. I've always wanted to play one. There's. You, there is like absolutely like the the reality could happen where Armor Core comes out and everyone's super stoked and then they're like, oh, I don't like Armor Core at all. It could, <laughs> it could, but I don't know, man. It's a different world. We live in a different world now. We live I in a new, a, a brave new age. World. There is we nothing do. going on in this world that's going to make people like Armor Core if it comes out wait, wait, as wait, just wait, wait. an Armor Core. I don't know. Game. The people I, are the people. I, the people are into no. it. I have a hypothetical question. And it's not about, you know, it's not even about the people. It's about the game critics. And you know what? I think the, the game, game critics, I think the game critics might give Armored Core a good review. I think they might. Well, it's going to score higher than like your typical Armored Core game because people respect from software right. so much more. It's going to yeah. get an 85. Uh, is there, is there it's gonna get an 85. This is it. This is the Monster Hunter world of Armored Core. <laughs> hypothetical <laughs> question hypothetical is there a situation in which a lot of people who are going to be reviewing and playing armored core for the very first time are super excited for armored core because it's from software and they're gonna they're gonna boot it up and realize that even though this game is really good it has almost nothing in common with a, their soul series like like yeah, it doesn't, absolutely and they're there, gonna be like there's gonna be this is upset good people it's not about dark that, souls yeah. and that's not good all right here's the thing here's the thing here's the oh, thing man. first of all the Monster Hunter comparison is sort of a bad one because Monster Hunter yes. review scores had been creeping up for years until it got to Monster Hunter. World. Mm. Go look at go, no. no, look at the reviews for Monster no. Hunter for you or what? Go look at the reviews no, for Brad. you on the 3DS. No, the thing is, no. the last two Armor Core games, six and then the expansion for six, got like 60s on Metacritic. Listen, and that's. No, listen. You listen to me. You listen to me, motherfucker. Listen, and people keep ignoring it. Armored Core Six. Listen to me, Bradley. Armored Core Six came out after Demon Souls and after Dark Souls. From Software had a lot of respect back oh then. Oh my but god! But critics, critics were still willing to uh-huh. say, you know what? This Armored Core game sucks ass. No, no From Soft was still like respected, but like was like that that studio that had made those two really cool action RPGs. They weren't. The developers of the beloved Soul series, Bloodborne and After Elden Ring. Demons and for Dark Souls. For fuck's sake. Demons and Dark Souls. Yeah, not enough. Not enough, Brad. Not enough. But they have broken through that that uh, that I like household name game. thermocline at this point. And and right. listen, to Nick's point, when Nick said that, you know, it, it's like it's like booting up, you know, whatever Nick said. Uh, my analogy would be like Thanks. what you've said. <laughs> Is that it would be like people booting up Raiders of the Lost Ark for the first time because it's a Lucasfilm movie and being like, hey, this is nothing like Star Wars. I don't like this. That's ridiculous, Nick. It's completely different, but it's still awesome. It's still cool. People still no, like no. it. No, Monster Hunter not, World, 85. Not, I'll hear no more. I'll hear, Raiders. Raiders. I'll hear no more of it. It's like booting hey, up Raiders you know, and the Raiders of the Lost Ark punching you in the dick over and over again and you having to do the same bullshit boss like for hours just trying to get through Raiders of the Lost Ark. Some people might right. like that movie more if that's what happens. Hey, I think I think what we can clarify here is that Armored Core 6 just became one of the most like highly anticipated releases for us as far as, you know, 
review scores go anyways because i'm can be, like i, I want to find Listen, out if you're were, if you're thinking about starting a video game review outlet now would be a great time to make sure that you're all set up and have a open critic profile ready to go by the end of august and in so the that, meantime go review more <laughs> <laughs> in the meantime, review War Tales, please. Do time with whatever Brad just said. Just Become focus on critic. getting ready for Armored Core. To, to Brad's original question from 25 minutes ago about <laughs> what it would take for Nick to not play Armored Core, I think the two answers are the fact that Sea of Stars comes out four, uh, four days, days later, later, and Baldur's Gate 3 is out three days after that. Ooh, fuck. Listen, the, the Ooh. whole like the whole armored core came out after Dark Souls and didn't review that well, so there's absolutely no weight to this idea that people are like just enamored with From Software. Like I just honestly, I don't buy it. Like, okay, no, Demon Souls in one Dark Souls game. Has like, grown. Completely respect different has grown. company than the FromSoft of 2023. You're right. Fun. You're right. Respect like, has grown. It w- the scores will be inflated a little bit. I, but think, I still think we live in a post truth world. Good? We live in no, a post truth world, and it does not have to be good. It doesn't have to be good, Brad. That's where Brad. you're wrong. That's why you'll lose. <laughs> okay, guys, um, I'm gonna have crazy. to rein it in a little bit because this is this is a podcast. Remember. <laughs> Yeah, what what, what is one, because we're yelling no, about armor great. core it's great but y'all are yelling over each other like <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm hoping that people can at least make out what's happening in this what, conversation what is the I, I poison swamp game. equivalent hey, of uh an armor core is, is it like a they sea of that. rust They're, it's like it's actually a no. poison swamp yeah <laughs> kind of <laughs> that poison there swamps have, have been a thing in armor core as well so don't wait worry really about that. yes i mean more or less like the equivalent of like you know, absolute horror. That fucking sick shit bullshit. goes back to Armor Core 2? Jesus. Hey, guys, guys, uh, Robin is playing Dark Souls 1 for the first time right hey, now. Tell uh, her to get ready for she, Armor Core. She just got to Blight Town. <laughs> well, the thing is, inflated review scores exist, right? Dark Souls 2 scores better than Demon Souls and Dark Souls 1, and everyone hates that fucking game. And it's because critics know that people love that shit, and the scores go up. The scores go up. All right. So, you know, Enough talking about scores. Critics are Let's hacks about... and they can't be trusted. Before we cut to break, I don't even I don't know if there's much to discuss here because I personally am on a media blackout at this point. But I know y'all necess- aren't necessarily at that point. But previews for the Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom dropped this week. Is there anything we want to say about that? Uh, Nick, you're full of shit. If if it was what? a nice polished trailer, you would have watched it. Stop. No. You didn't no, watch it. You literally you watched it with the last Zelda trailer. You, you were on about? media blackout before that last Zelda trailer, and you watched it. Nick. Dude, I here. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this, Brad. Let me tell you this. I haven't watched anything since that trailer. You didn't see the footage they Starting released. Now. You didn't see the footage they released of Nick's no. dick or of Link's dick. Oh no, I definitely missed no. the one of Link's dick. Uh, I also, I also Listen immediately up. went on media blackout uh, for. Jedi Survivor, and I have not watched the latest trailer for that or any of the preview footage for that. Yeah, I don't think either. There. there is one trailer you can watch of that that's fine. Uh, they they put I mean, out a new fine. one today with uh, with Mark Hamill in it. Oh, no, no, no I, saw media that. I, saw oh, okay. I saw that. You saw I it? Saw you fucking stop calling a media blackouts. Okay. It's okay that you don't want to watch a bunch of preview footage. You don't have to call this it. This is not what we're media black. Okay, uh, what? <laughs> it's, are we <laughs> fine. What are we talking? We've been about using that term for like <laughs> a decade, and now you're attacking me for using a term that I knew. I we I knew. I thought we all knew what it meant. Okay, I just wanted to say: Is there anything you want to say about the preview f- coverage for Tears of the Kingdom? I see no, a lot of debate happening in our own Discord about it. I here's the debate. Thing. Here's what the, we're gonna talk what? so much about really? this game. We're gonna talk so much about this game. I know that's and why that's I'm. That's what I'm not saying. Let's sit here and talk <laughs> about it for 25 minutes. Debate but implies contrary in opinions. So like, yes, what are people saying in the negative? Opinions. You want to hear what you want me to tell you? You want me to out people in our own community that are like name names, the, the, the drunken merchant. Oh, <laughs> he's, uh, he's just kidding. Name people. No Nintendo. I'm kidding. It's I'm kidding. If you're if you're listening, merchant, I'm just throwing you under the bus for for the lulls. There's other people too. I mean, it's not really it's not really negativity. It's more of like they're not convinced that this whole like nuts and bolts thing is enough to like. There's there's a lot of people in our Discord saying in the game. 
Okay, I know. Listen to me. Let me get the sentence out. He's, there's several people in our Discord saying they're focusing a lot on the nuts and bolts aspect of this whole thing, but like they know because they know how, what how they play games that they will never do anything more than the bare minimum with those systems uh, to get through lying. the game. They're lying. They're lying. Okay, that's okay. Lying. Is that nothing we're, else? We're to all say? gonna have a good time. They're being dude. Contrary. I can't it's like. Okay. What what can we say at this point that isn't just needless? We're gonna talk so masturbatory. Much about that's like, why, again, yeah, that's why I was like, does anybody have anything they want to say? Hoping that y'all would say this no, exactly. It's so okay, it's a, yeah, it's, we're it's a bad combo. We will talk about Tears of the Kingdom a lot in in, in, in fucking May. So let's take a break. When we come back, we got impressions. Like I said, we're going to talk about that Street Fighter Six demo. We're going to talk a little bit about Burning Short Shores. We, we, got, we got a lot to talk about. War Tales and Advanced Wars. So uh, stick with us. We'll be back after this quick break. We are back. Welcome back to the show. Time for impressions. Time to talk about the video games that we are currently playing. And I think I want to start tonight with Street Street Fighter. Fighter. No. Street Fighter. Not not a workout. Street Fighter, the Street Fighter 6 demo dropped last week. I want to apologize to everyone watching on the feed because this footage recorded by me, someone who has next to no experience playing fighting games, it's going to be rough. But anyways, uh, Crispy, I know you played this demo, right? This is also, it just so happens, a game that you drafted at the beginning of the year for your... This fantasy. is my number uh, one right. pick. This was, this no, was your oh, first was pick? Really? This was my first This is the Hot. This is the game I thought I was going to be able to scoop it as my second pick, but this savvy motherfucker over here. Savvy motherfucker I also played, swooped the, I also played the demo. Round. Yeah, I played the demo. Hey. Just the, the other part of the demo. Yeah, so uh, this footage, I, I, I tried to get a little bit of both of the uh, World Tour mode, and then I just went into the like one-on-one uh, mode and, and did some fights. Because uh, the demo only features two char- two playable characters, and then you get to try at the World Tour, where you can like make your own avatar and then run around an open world. You get to do, like, yeah. The avatar maker, you can make some truly ghoulish shit. It's insane. Dude, you, dude, you, I mean, insane. I feel like... I'm fe- I feel pretty good about the character that I made, but yeah, I was like the entire time I was going through that avatar, I was like, "Damn, I could, there's gonna be some freaks, some absolute freaks coming with this." <laughs> you should see what's out there; it's crazy. What's up, crispy? <laughs> no, I mean that was just yeah, the freaks. Uh, Chai was posting videos of freaks from the character maker earlier, and, and like 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 people who have like huge hips and like really long legs but like have such tiny arms that they can't even like that like like it affects your fucking hit boxes and everything so you can just like fucking gimp your character so he can't even like punch because his arms are too short but then there's gonna be people who go and who so somehow sick. manage to make that character like an actual just he's gonna steamroll everybody with it it's crazy so um sick. So, yeah, but like, yeah, I was actually one thing I will say, uh, right. I didn't really know what this world tour mode was. So I kind of wanted to get an idea first out of the gate about that mode. Um, and I, I didn't really know what to expect, but like that character creator is pretty deep, like, like lots of options, lots of like tweaking, very, very minute. It's, it's, I, it's one of those things where it's like, I could probably, if I really wanted to, I could probably spend hours in that character creator. I'm not going to, but I probably, I totally could. Um, this, but yeah, this mode is really cool, and I think it's, I think it's overall executed really well. The one thing that I kept thinking about while I was playing it is like, this seems like something that would be, like, this mode is something that like I would expect to see. In like a like a shonen anime fighting game, like 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 this would be like in a Naruto game or like a fucking Dragon Ball Z game. I'm pretty sure they've had sim like nothing quite as impressive as this, nothing that goes quite to the extent that this does. But this idea of like open world running around and just like fighting yeah. random people, like like that shit is it's kind yeah. of fucking thick. It, it's it's really cool. I mean, it's it's one of those you know. I think fighting games for the for the longest time 
again, speaking as someone who's not like a fighting game expert or anything, but like fighting games have struggled to find like ways to extrapolate the, the, the core gameplay premise into something that's, you know, not just like pick two fighters, pick a location and fight, you know, and Mortal Kombat has found some interesting ways to address it. And I was really curious, like what Street Fighter's version of that was going to end up being. And like, this is kind of addicting. Like, I like you can't you 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 can't even like leave this like kind of like small area in the demo. But like, you can immediately start running around and like challenge. It's weird. It's like this. It's like this city, uh, where like I guess all the people the communicate Metro's primarily thing. through fighting. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's a, like you walk up a, to people and you're like, "Let's fight." And you're like, "Okay, like, I, I fucking it, fight a mime." It I is fight a mime in this footage. It's that uh, it's that Roy Wood Jr. bit about Street Fighter where he's talking about like <laughs> like people are just out living their lives, like commerce is happening in the background, like like it's that taken to its absolute extreme. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. Oh my god, I I, I, up, I am really excited this, about this like, game. I walk up to this like. E- what appears to be like a young high school girl and just like hey let's fight and then boom you are in a fight and it's rad I, I, <laughs> um I, i'm really interested to kind of see how the systems are extrapolate out because this is this is little more than a proof of concept demo but like you can act you can pull out you can run around the city you can pull out your phone you can uh to like uh like you can use items like in combat to like boost stats and like heal yourself, which is crazy. And uh, you can like go into stores and buy outfits and stuff for for your character. And like they give you like just the smallest taste of all these things. And then they they kind of like hint to you that you'll eventually be able to like challenge like these legendary fighters that are that are scattered throughout the city and learn new abilities from them and stuff. And it's just like yeah. it all sounds really you, like, fucking cool. You like become the different street fighter characters like student. And while you're their student, you have access to their like fighting styles and yeah. like special moves and shit. And that's just fucking sick. Like the demo ends with them being like, Hey, you should head over to Chinatown and look for Chun Li. Like she'll teach you a thing or two and you don't get to do that yet, but yeah. fucking badass. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sick. Um, and, uh, and, and just kind of on a general note about this game again, because I, like, I'm pretty sure this is a this is a game I'm going to pick up and play, uh, which is not very common for me when it comes to fighting games. But like this game. Is dripping with just like style and like the the visual, like the look of it, like it's, I think looking at the world tour mode, it might be kind of hard to see like how gorgeous this game actually is. But like it's I think it's more apparent when you go into like more of the classic modes and you're doing like the one on one fights and uh, like the the recognizable characters and shit but like it is just like the music the yeah. like the the way they animate this the moves and like the backdrops and like like even like when you pick your fighters and you like walk out of like you they do this like crazy like cage it looks like a, like, a, like a cage fight introduction where the cameras are like following the players and they're like pointing at the camera and it's giving like stats on the on the fighters and shit i was like this is rad looking and i'm here for it Sick. um I feel I like an that's idiot. Not, that's, like the most, that's like the, not like the most important thing when it comes to a fighting game, but like, man, this game has style. I was saying, no, I, I, think I, that, I think that is important, actually. I, yeah, I, I feel know. like if 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 people really aren't vibing with kind of the look and style of a fighting game, it has a harder time kind of really catching the attention of even the FGC, right? Like mechanics alone, I I feel like aren't enough to like really make a a game popular with the fgc unfortunately like it needs to be like a nice looking stylish game i feel like you know yeah well i feel like stuff like king of fighters kind of struggles because it it always visually seems like it's a generation behind even though like people really respect the mechanics and stuff you know it's got to be flashy yeah that's why i think virtual fighter which is considered to be like the better more technical fighting game versus like tekken never really like you know like blew up in the in the fgc because you know tekken's the really flashy one with the bear and you know it's you know that stuff's important and and i think people were kind of down on the look and style of six i I mean a five and people really kind of like were shit talking to everybody's banana hair and stuff and (laughs) And everyone's been responding to this very positively yeah, in terms I'm, of the I'm, look and the style and the mechanics. So. I I think this, this is an early I think this is an early contender for like one of the best looking games of the year, just from like kind of like a design standpoint. I, I think this is yeah. 
so much sure. flash and it's gorgeous and I, I and like i like they only give you access to two fighters it's ryu and luke uh in the demo but i was like oh man like like they didn't they they didn't want to give you like it's lame sh- though right some of the other <laughs> fighters are so cool luke is so lame what yeah a- but yeah, like yeah, ryu you the most is like character yeah but you got to have ryu and luke is supposed to be like the main character of the story so that's those that makes sense why yeah, they were that, 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 or or chun lee or even even jury is no, it like, jury? Like, is like the, the jury yeah but there's a lot of the new characters look really cool too. Oh yeah. It's, it's unfortunate that Luke is so lame, but I mean, this happened, but like the main character of a street fighter doesn't ma- mean much. I mean, uh, Alex was the quote unquote main character of street fighter three. And like, no one cares about fucking Alex. So, mm, mm. you know, uh, I, I, I want to say something. Could... Oh, yeah, go, go for it. You guys won't shut the fuck up. I know. Oh, sorry. God. <laughs> <It's about laughs> armor Listen, I, what I was trying to say like 10 minutes ago is that I felt like an idiot because I didn't realize what Mr. Papasha in chat said and that that world tour mode does feel like a Yakuza game. And if it has like some of that shit going on in it. Oh, look I, don't know, I, did, I didn't think out. that either. It does look, look a little like a fuck <laughs> out. It needs that to be really would developed, be crazy. Though. It needs to be really developed. I, and I hope it's good. And, and and I hope it's not like I ho- I really hope they went all the way and, and like kind of put their heart into it because some sometimes you hear about like these cool modes and like say like a modern Mario sports game and it always seems like really exciting in trailers but then you realize that it the final game it's like kind of thin not that long mm-hmm. and the presentation is kind of not what you were expecting and it's just kind of like eh, this is not all that hype um I hope so I hope there's a lot to it I really do. You know, are there two the story fir- modes? I mean, because like there's the world tour mode, but then I'm I was in the menu and like when you go to like the fighter fighter arena or whatever, there's like a there's, you couldn't pick it in the demo, but it oh, said yeah, story yeah. mode. Yeah, and I was that's like, probably just your typical arcade stuff right. with a little bit of story, arcade yeah. mode with a little bit of story. So that's that's cool. Do you think like, they're gonna do seems- like? You think they're gonna do like like traditional kind of fighting game stories where it's like every character just yeah. kind of has like their one little thing like they got an yeah. intro they got an outro or do you think they're going to crib off of what netherrealm has been doing for a little while and do like no, this whole see, narrative see, they tried to do that with five and no and no one really liked it they, they did that with five wait, what, and it came but wait, they didn't like it because really like they it. did that or they didn't like it because no it's, just uh, the execution the execution wasn't nearly as like wait, what are you alluding to exactly interesting well, like how another, like in Nether Realm story modes, where they're like one connected narrative, and you go through chapters that you play as like a different character mm. in each chapter. Mm. Five I mean, gotcha. was mid. It was mid. Yeah, was but mid. also like that was like, if we're being real here, Street Fighter Five was pretty much an early access game for a good long time. That no. story mode came out way after launch, like, and it and it felt like an afterthought because it was an afterthought. So like, I mean, Street Fighter Five just in general was kind of, I don't want to use the word disaster, but wasn't it kind of a disaster? No, it was not that either. Y'all are, okay, we're talking, y'all are, y'all are talking your about fucking things lane. you don't understand, and it's fine. It's fine. You're out of your fucking element. It, and it's it's not, it's am, not. Actually, I'm very much out of my like, element. Like, it doesn't, it do, it's not like Street Fighter Four is one of the highest rated fighting games of all time, and that didn't have a fucking story mode. You don't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking matter. All I'm saying. With this one though, the vibes are good in the competitive scene, and that's going to reflect in scores. And if this mode is really good, I think they're going to be even higher. And it does look really fun. I, I just hope it's actually good and developed. You know, I have fond memories of like the world tour mode from like Street Fighter Alpha 3, which was just a lot of like really cool single player stuff like this. Um, you weren't really running around a world, but like th- they they have a history of you know really good single player stuff it just it's been a long time and there wasn't in any of the games so um i'm glad to see that it's back in some form the thing that this demo did for me um because i can't really i can't really speak to the like the more intricate aspects of this as a fighting game right i can tell you there's two different like fighting modes that i tried both there's the classic mode where you actually have to like put in specific yeah. inputs to pull out moves and there's there's a there's a modern one which is more of a scaled back but i think is more for like pe- probably aim more towards people like me who want to be able to pull off cool shit would not have to do like a lot of the complicated That's inputs so crazy, but i've been trying but, so hard to pull those off and it just i, I tried both and i think i prefer classic 
Um, yeah. But it's still cool that they, they give you the option, I guess. But like what this demo did for me more than anything was like, like seeing trailers, I was like, this game looks nice, but it looked kind of chunky. Like I was like, it like I, I, it didn't seem like it was going to be super responsive. And this kind of alleviated all of my fears. Like this, this game feels very responsive. It feels very snappy and moves feel like they have weight to them. I don't know. It just, yeah. Yeah. and that's, and that, yeah. that's great to see. Uh, yeah. I don't think you've Which, ever, you ever know, you ever have to worry about game fill in a Street Fighter game. <laughs> again, Street this Fighter is me at my element here. I, I don't okay. I don't know. I was, that's purely based off of seeing the game and not getting my hands on a controller and not having touched a Street Fighter game pretty much ever. I mean, I've played some casual. I think I've played Street Fighter Two a little bit back in the day, but like I don't think I've touched a Street Fighter game since Street Fighter Two. Um, so again, way out of my element here. Yep. But I'm pretty excited for this. Definitely going to be a 95. Me Definitely going to be a 95. Christ. <laughs> Chris, Chris, Chris is going to be rolling in points. <laughs> he will. Um, it's cool. It's cool. And this game's coming out sooner than I was expecting. Like June 1st. That's coming up quick. All right. Yeah. Uh, switching gears a little bit before we let Brad go off about. Uh, go his... off. You mean bore, bore you to tears? About I didn't want to I didn't wanna say that. I know, I'm actually. I'm yeah, actually he actually, meant. He meant go off like in a in a in a in a sleep bomb kind of way. Yeah. <laughs> hey, go don't ever mean, uh, don't ever assume that. I, I'm actually interested to hear about War Tales because I know almost nothing about it. What do you want me to say, bro? You want me to just okay, fine. Fuck you, bro. I want you to be honest. I want you to be, be honest with us, Nick. I I didn't. Hey, I didn't say anything. I didn't say like I'm. Uh, I, I'm interested to hear about War Tales, and I'm promising you I won't fall asleep. I just want to know what it, I want to know more about it. I could get really bored. We'll see what happens. But before we get there, uh, Chris Davis and I have both been playing through. Well, I know Chris Davis finished it. The uh, Burning Shores DLC for Horizon Forbidden West. And I know Speaking Horizon Forbidden. Asleep. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say, <laughs> Brad's going to fall asleep first because apparently he thinks this, is, this game is like super boring. Whatever. Um, <laughs> what are you? Brad Lap I don't think it's boring, but my joke the other day was pretty funny when I was like, Oh, I totally heard this one's less boring than Horizon 2. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which was the yeah. most insulting backhanded mm-hmm. thing, but it was funny. So yeah. you can fly on shit like right away in this one? Which yeah, I, mean, I heard he's... that was a big complaint about about <laughs> two was that you had to you, don't get, you I... had to wait till like the last mission to fly. Well, yeah, this this yeah. DLC is post campaign. Yeah, so yeah. so if anybody play, played her, the original Horizon and then play, there is that there was that ex, like literal expansion like it was a separate product. What was it called? Um, the Frozen Wilds. Frozen Wilds. Like that DLC. was like a twenty dollar expansion. It wasn't a DLC. You could buy that game by itself and play it without ever having touched Horizon. Is that yeah, that's true? not what. The, the yeah, that's oh, yeah, yeah, that's not what this is. This is a you have to have beaten for, Forbidden West to access oh. the campaign for Burning Shores. So this and increases it's the PS5 level. PS five only. And it's PS5 only, why. which is which is such a stupid idea. Though. Um, it it, that's it is such a, that's such an insult. This is like a story DLC, right? It is, continues which means people. It, it continues the story. Um, and and from what I've heard, this, it has something to do with the technology used to generate the clouds. But like, how important would, is that even to carry over in the PS4 version? No, I don't know. Chris, it's, Chris it's insulting. Like, like it, it's fucking insulting to the people I mean, who like bought no, the game is. on the PS4, which is still a lot of people. I mean, if you want to do some cool tech stuff, wait for the fucking sequel or just do it with the base game and stop and don't fuck well, over Here's PS4 my question. Because Chris Davis, Chris Davis has finished this DLC. Chris Davis, is there any oh. point in this DLC where like the cloud tech is integral to like the like the experience? It's like not, I know it's cool, but he has no idea. It, okay, so real quick, just to explain, the cloud tech basically they completely switch it out from base horizon uh Forbidden West. Right. Uh instead of it being like that that really cool like naturally flowing and generated clouds that you can't interact with it at all. This is a new system that's voxel based that, uh, reacts to player interaction. Um, you can like fly through the clouds and it creates, you can see like Whoa, the clouds. When you're saying like, cloud tech, you mean literal clouds, clouds? fluffy in the air. Oh, you're yes. talking about like cloud. Tech, no, you know, no, like... no, 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 no. The tech used to create like, the, cl- the look of the clouds in this game. Is like apparently what owners because of literal clouds. 
Okay, well, first of all, first of all, let me just say, Jesus. I haven't seen like I haven't necessarily seen proof uh, that this is why this is the specific reason why they held it back from the PS4 version. That is what everybody is theorizing because it's like the one big difference, I guess, technology yeah, wise. Yeah, it, it's 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 uh, the biggest technology upgrade in this game. I cannot give like, you a reason other than that as to as to why it's PS5 exclusive. But what so to answer your device. original question? Um, mm -hmm. there is no story content that requires the use of that cloud tech, but that being said, there is a really fucking cool encounter if you're willing to go, uh, flying up through the clouds. I am willing and I will do that. <laughs> that Honest, honestly, honestly, that, cool. <laughs> that, that moment, uh, which I don't want to spoil, probably one of the, my favorite parts of this content. So... That's cool and all, but like, how hard would it have been to just not put that part in the yeah. PS4 version? That seems what, weird. What, was it was it so good that that you think it's okay the pores don't get to play the rest <laughs> of the Horizon story? <laughs> oh man, it's that specifically is pretty... the cloud tech during that it's, encounter. It's more memorable because you know that poor people can't experience it. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, okay, my. all right, we got, we've gotten out of our system. Uh, Please, uh, yes. Chris Davis has finished this game, but I w here's what I, here's I'll, I'll do my little piece here first, and then I'll let Chris Davis take over because I have only played like three hour four hours of this so far. Um, you know this 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 DLC does kind of like what you expected. It ups the it increases the level cap. It extends all of the the different skill trees down, so you, there's new abilities you can unlock. Things that like I will say, it's really cool that I, that I wish you could have done this in the base game which is kind of unfortunate, but like, cause you had that, that glider tech, right? You can unlock an ability in the skill tree that allows you to fire your bow and arrow while gliding with the glider. And I was like, Oh my God, why the fuck could I, I spent that entire game not being able to do that. And that fucking sucks, but it mm. works. It's, it's great here. So like, so like that stuff's pretty cool. And from what I can tell from this, they've introduced a lot of new machines. There's like a giant fucking frog. There's like a, I think there's like whales or some the shit. I don't radio menus insane. The, the, yeah. So the, you're the, looking the, at post game radio menus. <laughs> it's like, I'll, I have so many different weapons equipped at this point. Yeah. Um, and, and you haven't even unlocked like the new big weapon yet. There's no, a new big weapon. I have not. I, I'm, I'm, pr I'm still pretty early. What is it? Is it I will say this. Underwhelming as the spear from God of War. Let me just say, let me just say, because the internet obviously has already ruined <laughs> I went looking for screenshots and or art to use for the backstrap today and thing, and there's like you just Google burning shores, and there's a massive spoiler that just shows up everywhere, and yes. it's the thing that people are review bombing the game about, which you know, oh, like, like people shitty like bigots, right? Yeah, yeah. shitty bigots. Um, An optional conversation sh moment is ruining this game for so I many thought, assholes. When I heard about the review bombing, I'm like, bravo, they're review bombing it because they fucked over PS4 owners. No, and then I found out, it. oh no, it's because of bigot stuff. And Wait, like, oh. what happens? Does she kiss a girl? Yes. I mean, yes. Uh, <laughs> that's what it is, really? Uh, <laughs> yes. A completely uh, optional uh, moment uh, that has basically no impact on the rest of the story. Wait, it's optional? <laughs> Yeah, it's optional that, that he, she kissed the girl. Did did she kiss a girl in your game, Chris Davis? I thought they thought she was ugly. Yes. What do they care? Uh, they care a lot, woke, apparently. God damn it! They don't want uh, their games to be woke. I will say this: I am I I have met this character and I like this character a lot, and I am here for it. So yeah, she's I'm, good. I, I, actually, I do like that. It. Actually, makes me very excited to actually play this from a story perspective not that i wasn't already because I, I am pretty invested in the horizon franchise but like you know that actually got me more excited to play the, to play this so that, that's pretty cool the really the good thing about her character games. the really good thing about her character is that she's like a foil for the players to be reminded as to what the overall arching mm. narrative of these horizon games is mm. like you're because over time aloy is filling her in on the story and in turn, you're being reminded of, oh, yeah, oh yeah. this is what happened when I played this game a year and a half ago. Or that's, I didn't. Yeah, that's, right. that's true. I've already had several conversations with her where I was like, oh, yeah, that did happen, didn't it? <laughs> and, and it's kind of <laughs> nice to have that extra perspective, too, of like, how does this person who has never been on the shores of the continent has no idea as to who these other tribes are, or what's been going on over here and getting filled in on the vents there? It's cool. Can, can I, I? I hate to. I hate. 
You're gonna do it I anyways. Go ahead. I, I, I almost don't want to say it, right? Do it. Do it it, it is about girl kissing. Why Fuck is it up. like is this an optional thing? Is it are, are they like not willing to commit? I mean, no, oh, it's it's on. because, because being a lesbian is not an option, Brad. <laughs> what I'm saying so is. Sorry. Is really like why bad. is this not in the main thrust of the story? Like why is this an optional scene? Because like, in the Horizon games, here? they have a uh, they have a relationship system between the characters where you can make certain choices that okay. Aloy responds. So you could you could choose to be in a relationship with with a girl or yeah. Not. Basically, you have three options. You have a, a neutral. Cowards. You have a, a a a from the heart love interest thing, and then you have a negative response that you can do at certain points. And in this particular instance, in this DLC, if you are constantly doing the positive heart related response to that character, eventually, yes, you smooch. I mean, I, I, I will say this. I, I, I will say this. Like in the base games, I've always found it kind of strange that like there wasn't a lot of emphasis. That, I mean, because it's a very, very story driven series and and there's a lot of different characters that you interact with. But like relationship stuff has never been a major component of this series and i've always kind of hoped that they wish they had done it they kind of tried to do that with forbidden west a little bit but like you said it's all optional stuff and it's not particularly i don't think it changes the trajectory of the character in a significant way i wish it i kind of wish it did i kind of wish they just made aloy gay and that was just that was just it um in, because in, in, in forbidden I, west it was more uh familial uh stuff whoa. going on <laughs> In 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 this this in uh, in burning thinking? shores, That's it's more interest. romantic interest, is what I'm yeah. saying. He's he's not saying he's being ro- she's being romantic with her family. He she, he's saying the Stetsis? the relations. The, <laughs> God damn it! No. Uh, All right, we this podcast. If Brad says one more fucking word, that mouth. <laughs> Wait. Okay. I, I, I do want to say, why do you think they didn't make this DLC standalones, given that it's know. PS5 exclusive and they did that with the last game? I don't know. It's because weird. I, I it's kinda weird. Was, I was talking about me. I kind of want to play a shorter, honestly, better, more exciting Horizon experience that isn't the full Monty Horizon 2 yeah, where you, you don't do get the this. flying thing until the very end. You know what I, I mean? I think like, the... this seems like think the reason is because they want you to be able to freely go back and forth between the forbidden west and the burning shores which are two com- separate completely different maps um and they do you want you to have those character interactions with those previous characters where they can comment on what you've been doing over in the burning shores and okay, vice versa. But, but they didn't have to have it that way i mean they no, could have just didn't. made a yeah, it's weird. I mean, they they could have the made day, this a third person shooter. They didn't have to make it that way. At the, at the end of the day, they made it. They made a literal expansion to the Forbidden West, and you have to finish Forbidden West to get this. And that's an unfortunate well, decision, but that's not as, what we're here to talk about. Can we talk about like, the gameplay? You, there is. Oh, is there? Okay. Yes, well, there's I, stuff I, to I do, talk I about. I do want to say. I do want to say that it's a shame because. Sony first party titles are some of the few titles that actually run really well on a PS4. So it's super fucked up for the clouds. Right. Whatever. For the clouds. Like, yes. Well, new gameplay. Sorry. Okay. So I wanted to talk about now that the gameplay finally loops. Um, <laughs> so it's not a lot of footage. They do a lot of fun stuff in this DLC. Uh, I mean, they start you out with the ability to fly, which is great. Um, so a lot of the level design encourages you to take flight and and explore that way. The map design, it's so the map is uh, plays out as if between, you know, thousands of years ago and today, the big one hit several times. So what the remains of L.A. is broken up into like like monolith plat plateaus with like ocean and lava in between. Mm. Um, and it's, it's kind of an actually interesting design. Uh, it's a lot more interesting, I think, than what the, how they designed San Francisco in forbidden West. San um, Francisco. this takes place in the real world. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I mean, you know, the forbidden West, the, is referring to traveling to San Francisco. That's the whole game. You, you go to Las Vegas to in forbidden West. Yeah. On the way to San Francisco. Right. Yeah. I mean, the, the entirety of the first game takes place in and around Salt Lake City. 
Do they go to the Luxor Hotel and they're like, yes, this, kind of, yes, this pyramid that the ancients built. Yes, yes actually, but, yes. Yeah, but of with, course they do, because every fucking post-apocalyptic story that goes to Las Vegas does. <laughs> but but, but like, it's it's funny because like all it's been thousands of years, so the people that live now they don't they don't look at it as like a big casino. They they don't. No, they, yeah. they, 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 well, they, think, they think technology is magic. Yeah. Well, I yeah, mean, not not to put too fine a point on it, but Las Vegas is buried underneath the sand, underneath a dome. And when you get to the dome, it is filled to the brim with water. So you're swimming around on the strip uh, underwater. Uh, underwater this swimming. Is in this thing in this game. In, for, in this, that's in, this, in, in the Midwest. base game. Oh. In the base. And but here here's the thing: is that to tie into that, because this is taking place in L.A. in a post-apocalyptic hellscape there's a lot of this time a lot of underwater exploration you can do um Dude, the swimming in this game because of bad, global actually. warming there is a i mean literal but uh one of the oh, new machines this... that you get in the game is called a, a a water wing it's basically the the sun wing pterodactyl thing but it's designed to fly and swim underwater oh, so it's a mouth that's... that you can go swimming in that's pretty game. cool this game is woke, isn't it? Yes. Mm. What? <laughs> and <laughs> the global warming. And you and you the also lesbian. haven't found the theme park yet, Nick. Like no, I'm kind I'm of surprised you haven't seen this. it. All right, you're spoiling shit. Come on. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. Like Knott's Berry Farm, or I'm I'm I I will not say at this point, but it no is more specific, it is right uh, up but, Nick's alley. He will love that. I do I I do I do know you said you that I I'm sure you want to make sure you mention this before we move on, but like the final boss of this game is pretty cool. The final boss fight is probably the best boss fight in a Horizon game yet. It That's is so fucking cool. The scale of it is kind of amazing. Uh, I loved every single moment of that. I loved it so much. Um, and That's if this cool. is like any indication of what to expect, expect for Horizon 3, I'm a day one purchase, no matter what it's launching against. I am so excited for that. <laughs> like, yeah, Elden yeah. Ring 2? I don't... I, sure. Let, let it I launch against Elden Ring 2 that. and I will be playing Horizon. I do find it funny that that, that qualifier had to, <laughs> had to be thrown in. Because yeah. you know because it's going to happen. That, because of the boss fight, now you're going to snub Elden Ring 2? Yep. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, this boss fight is so fucking cool. And Nick, I beg you to stream it because I want to see your reaction. Nobody wants to watch me play Horizon. Everybody thinks that everybody in our community so, thinks this game sucks, and I, I, I hate it. No, they don't. You're just very insecure. <laughs> Brad, they all do. It's funny. That's all. That's all. We just we take Did advantage you, I, of your insecurities. Yeah, I, I stream. Think... I've streamed Horizon a few times before. And I like it's just like chat. It's chat's just dead as fuck. Just you know, dead. it's a meme. It's a meme, and it's a their of their a meme of their own making because they didn't pay attention to the release schedule. You're right. And now You're it's right. funny to make fun of. Horizon. But I am I, I'm very excited, you know, like quite honestly, I was sitting like I'm enjoying it, obviously, because I love Horizon. But like <laughs> Jedi Survivor is installed now and ready it to are, go. This always uh, looks uh, cool when I watch it, honestly. But like you're telling me I have to play all 156 hours of Horizon <laughs> 2 before it's I get to like this? 50 hours, but yeah. I mean, it's, sp I it's mean, specifically post game content. Yeah, yeah you, you cannot. I have the to, story have is written to where you could equipped. not understand or even comprehend what is going on in this you DLC without completing the story. The story. Yeah. Like, I, can't, I can't even start this. You couldn't no, no. even begin to no. understand what they're talking about. There's, no. we, we need to move on a like, spear. The entire, like, um, I guess the entire, like, premise of this DLC only exists because of the ending of Forbidden West. So yes. like, yeah, but which obviously they didn't have to do that. They, that was a choice, but, but it was a good choice. The case. They're like dinosaurs, but they're machines. Yeah. yeah Thanks. Cool. Thanks. I do like robot dinosaurs. Dude, um, the fucking robot frogs are rad. The robot like, frogs are really interesting. Like the, the only, the only downside I have I to this have DLC to is that there's a only robot anything besides this guy, which you've been fighting for 28 <laughs> minutes. Dude. Okay. Let me just, as, as, 
So Chris Davis told me right before the podcast that like something happened with his capture card. He couldn't capture footage. And I was like, do you want me to capture some? And he was like, well, we start show soon. I was like, fine, I'll, fuck it. I'll do it. So I just turned on and this is where I was. And that's why I'm fighting this fucking thing for like 15 minutes of this footage. I was going to try and do some underwater swimming just for you, Brad, but I ended up getting sucked into this I, battle. I mean, let me tell you, this almost, it's almost a turnoff. How many of these things? <laughs> there were three of them and they're a bitch. <laughs> Okay. They they are but, kind of designed to be the toughest uh, enemy that you encounter. I will. That's say. good to know because I I had the exact opposite idea when I saw them because I was like, oh, they look like small versions of these other things. Yeah, the, uh, the frogs but, I would say are much easier by comparison. Really? Uh, that's oh, damn. Well, I mean, the thing, um, the thing about the frogs is that they've got that symbiotic relationship with the the new fly esque like robots. Oh. Yeah. Um. Like they they will lay eggs for those flies, which will hatch if you get close to them. But they will what? also eat the flies to get back health. Yes, dude. All right, dude. Yes. I, They're robots. We're getting, you're right. We're getting into the weeds. Yeah, but dude. Oh man, they do. The 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 enemy design in Horizon just keeps getting better and better. Like that. Like everything Chris Davis just described with those frogs is is true. And it's kind of a, the more I think about it, the more the crazier it it, it becomes. Like it's I robots. You. It's wild. Okay. They are robots. I they believe you. Robots, but they're like. It seems cool. It's the talking that I'm scared of, and all the bows. But you know, I still want to play this. But I don't want to play all the bows. I want to I, I, I <laughs> fly on this thing. Yeah. I want to do the flying and the frogs. Damn it! All right. So uh, like, so you're right. I, I totally get. I totally get it, Brad. I, I totally get it. Um, and we can move on. The footage okay. is about to loop a second time. Um, but <laughs> I'm very, very excited to, to play this DLC, especially now that, Chris Davis, you, you've, you've given me lots of expectations for this final boss. And I'm going to do this. It's it's well-deserved. And like I said, you haven't even gotten to one of the cooler things in the DLC yet. Lots of underwater swimming with, like, lava and stuff, too. Like, un underwater, yeah. like, lava spouts and shit. It seems pretty cool. Anyways, Burning Shores is pretty rad. That's all we're saying. All right, Brad. I'm just glad there's shit coming out that y'all are just stuff y'all are going to put higher than Zelda on y'all's end of the year list or whatever. First off, how dare yeah. you? Um, and second, uh, I'm just sure that's math and... mathematically possible. Uh, Hey, it's possible. Let me talk I... about my two games. Like, neither of yeah, these do. games have to be. Let's start with Advance Wars. You want to start with Advance Wars? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Fuck it. Go. I didn't know which one you wanted to go with first. So, no, Up to you. I mean, here's here's the thing. Um, uh, Advance Wars is Advance Wars. <laughs> it's it's the remake of one and two. And here's the thing about Advance Wars. Um, I love Advance Wars. Advance Wars are extremely good games. Um, but like, this. I I I I I feel bad playing Advance Wars because it's Advance Wars, and I'm like, okay, well, this is Advance Wars. I've played plenty of advance wars are you saying this this is cr this is crossing into your like i don't replay games territory and now you feel like you're I mean, replaying a game no i i it just i feel guilty because i could I, there's like i've i haven't finished a game this year you know you have so said like, when, when i'm when i'm sitting there playing advance wars i'm like okay well this is good i've also played this before and i really like advance wars and i could keep playing this because i love advance wars but it's also advance wars um with you know slightly less cool yeah. art which is true i actually um, think it looks pretty cool oh you mean like the actual like the, the art art or like the, or the visual no, style of like no like the visual style is not like advance wars when it came out is was like visually way better than this and oh. if it, that's that that that's a, it was an arts an art style animation sprite style like still super holds up like advance wars is an extremely cool looking game this looks nice but it also looks a little mobile at times you know um you know which is definitely not i wasn't kidding when i said Advance i think Wars, I which was like a cool beautiful game um i wasn't kidding so, when i said i like the look of this no sure it's not like a bad looking game but advance wars i think is like you know an amazing looking game especially for its time it just has like a really cool fucking art style like amazing sprite work and you know this is just you know, it's a nice modern take, but it, you know, it has, it has more of like a mobile vibe, right? Like yeah. this is, 
but what is stand out to me is that like oh the music is so fucking good it's so good like all the remixes i love all these themes of all these iconic co themes and like the remixes are so fucking good they whip so hard and as much as i love like the power and like especially like the superpower like themes when you activate your co powers like they do like crazy remixes on the co themes now when you activate their powers their mm-hmm. co powers and and like some of them are like really fucking good remixes and i'm like oh this is this is fucking awesome like if anything this game has been worth it to me just to to hear all this new music of you know these themes that i just adore and i've heard for countless hours because i mean i mean that's what you're doing when you're playing advances you're listening to like the co themes over and over again um but they're fucking great that shit is great here and you know there's some nice modern the the thing is this will always be a little frustrating to me because what i wanted more than anything from this game which i've been screaming about since they announced it literally since they announced it on this podcast in our discord everywhere on twitter i i tweeted at the developer of like dude it's like the day after this game was announced, you need to do this. And they, oh, I you about to and say. The, the online offerings for this game are really poor. And that's such a crime because Advance Wars is such a well designed game. It's like fucking chess, right? And, and it's amazing, you know, in multiplayer. And they, they just kind of sort of drop the ball. What's it's the like game really that bad. you, the, what's you the game play that you like compared a live, it to? You can play a live online match with like someone on your friends list. It's like the, the advanced wars matches are really long. They're really long, and it's crazy for you to have to like play it live. Uh, so, if uh, uh, war so was at home, yeah, you're you're referring to war groove where you would have like the be- like you would make a move, and then you would have you could wait for the other person to make yeah. the move. So it'd be like asynchronous a- multiplayer. So like, uh, not everyone's played war groove, right? But like words with friends, right? One of those types of games where you can have a bunch of games going at once. You take your turn, you send your turn over, and everybody you know you're playing with can take their turns, and then you pull your game out, and you're like, oh, this game, this game, and this game I have going, I can take my turn now. Which in in advanced wars, you're turn can take a long time right so it's perfect for that sort of thing play by mail they used to call it whatever this asynchronous right. multiplayer is absolutely perfect for this type of game and war groove was proof of that it was awesome i'm never going to play the online multiplayer in this that's insane like like a live match long ass match with one person on your friends list that's just mm-hmm. absolutely not what i wanted and i feel like they really dropped the ball they had the opportunity to do something cool with it because it deserves that sort of online support like advanced wars is an extremely popular online game advanced wars by web and there's even competitors to advanced wars by web that are about to launch it's like super active community they have like tournaments and stuff like grandmasters you know of of competitive advanced wars and it's it's just a shame that like it's it, it's honestly disrespectful to the franchise to like do nothing with the multiplayer and so that sort of drags it down for me so i don't know it, it's 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 kind of a bummer that aspect but the game that's there is still the game i love and it's the game i could play all day and it's really addictive but i do feel a little bad playing it because i have all these other games you know, you know, i still haven't finished fire emblem which is a game i, I really enjoy. apparently pokop says that a lot of reviews shared that sentiment of the lack of async yeah asynchronous and, and i'm so. glad they got called out for that right i'm glad they got called out for it because it deserved more and they and they had all the time in the world apparently um so i don't know I, I don't know why they didn't try harder there because you know like i said it deserved what is chris davis counting Sorry, i'm counting how many times you said advanced wars so far it's 20 well, that's that, that's the name of the game what do you uh, yeah but you're using a pronoun as an adjective and sometimes a verb and i'm like i'm trying to keep track of the grammar issue here oh well aw i'll call it aw i, I don't know what you want from me um, but it's cool. It's AW because it's a <laughs> remake of AW. So oh man, I want a root if, beer if, now. If you if, the thing is, if you've ever played Advance Wars, just the worst it's, root beer. It's one. It's, it's it's two full Advance Wars games. There's still a lot of content, even if it's not like online multiplayer. Like the war, the war room, you could play for like countless hours. You know, you can make your own maps and stuff. You can. You know, play we, with the person on your friends list. It's worth it. 
I mean, uh, I don't know if it's quick. I don't know if it's going to sell at sixty bucks, but like, probably. I not. don't know why there's not like full voice acting when there's not much story. I, I feel like they should have tried harder because the series deserves better. But if you've never played it, it's amazing. It's like some of the best strategy gaming out there. So uh, pick up Advance Wars. I have one question for for crispy before brad talks about war tales what is your favorite root beer if not a and w i mean i'm not even like i don't even know that i have a favorite root beer but a and w is not it a and w is way too heavy on the artificial wood what about ibc vanilla flavor IBC? what about what ibc is that rank anywhere what ibc i don't know oh you know what actually is a good one that virgil's root beer that Virgil's comes in, like, is really glass good. bottle that's really good yeah it's Not very really smooth like, i've never heard of that but i'll ch- i'll look for it you can Anyways. get it at whole foods it's expensive as hell there's oh, sometimes shit. at hb right. but they they come in four packs yeah all right brad tell us about war tales war tales i mean this is another game that i've been playing and you know i i, I don't i guess i haven't played as much as i'd like because you know there's stuff like advanced wars i don't know um these both seem like pretty is... large games maybe i'm wrong yeah yeah though this is a very large game this is a very long large game uh but l- let me break it down for you it's not complicated and you'll understand why it's something that resonates with me um it's like you know it's, it's the mount it's mountain blade it's that formula right where you have it's a big Enough huge said. open world and you're and you're building a band of mercenaries for like from nothing and you're exploring this world and um but instead of you know cool real time you know joust you know on your horse or whatever um the combat is turn-based tactics you know like grid-based turn-based tactics um there is sort of like a a game that's out there that is like this that may might be a little bit more popular i don't don't think y'all may might not be familiar with it but if you ever played battle brothers it's kind of a lot like battle brothers which was a game that's very much mountain blade but with turn-based tactic combat so um yeah of course that's my whole you know it's made for me right um and i've been having a lot of fun with it because i like mountain blade and i like turn-based tactics and like the tactics are you know very good there's a lot of like movement positional stuff which i think is always important in a good like grid-based turn-based tactics game and it just it, it has that very satisfying like arc of man i feel like we're, we're just a bunch of at the start you just feel like a bunch of weak ass you know farmers with pitchforks almost and you can you feel like you can barely do anything but but sort of that progression of of building your army and and you know recruiting people who are like good at certain things and and you know getting stronger in battle but also like sort of expanding your um your skill set like outside of battle like oh now i have someone who's like really good at like forging and someone who's really good at fishing and someone who's really good at cooking and all that stuff is necessary to sort of maintain that progression of your like mercenary band just like in mountain blade and Mm -hmm. you know battle brothers and whatnot and i found that really rewarding the the thing that's strange is like a lot of a lot of that stuff that you do like between battles like fishing or like chopping wood or mining and stuff uh you know forging they all have like mini games attached to it which is super Mm -hmm. strange for like there to be mini games in this type of like semi pc ass like you know (laughs) brad type game it's weird for there to be like little clicky mini games but there are and that seems a little strange because you know if if i do this mini game perfectly this armor that i'm crafting is going to be like a superior version and i definitely need that version because you know, mm-hmm. you know, it's like an R- open RPG that's kind of difficult, and I really need that piece of armor. But I guess I got to be really good at these mini games. Holy to shit, make them, that was is, brutal. It's a strange choice, <laughs> but I, I look, sort of like the flavor. Oh man, am I cutting out? Uh, I mean, your video the seems to be. I can still hear. Bed. I can still hear Wait, you. I, I need to. I need to see physical activity from y'all if if I'm jacked. All right. Oh no. I'll chill out a little bit. Uh, Crispy's gonna talk. Talk to you about a uh, mountain blade. Crispy has crispy has has moved has <laughs> left his call. his computer for a hot second. I guess I don't know what's happening here, but you're going to give me no choice but to move on to the four player minute if <laughs> if you're relying on crispy right here. God damn it! Shame what's up, Chris just, Davis? We just talked more about uh, burning shores. 
Yeah, are there how many new machines are in Horizon? Sorry, guys, we're having technical difficulties. If you're listening at home, that's why this sounds so weird. Uh, so while we're waiting on Brad and Crispy to figure this shit out, uh, hey, Chris Davis. Yeah. How many new machines are in this Burning Shores DLC? Technically speaking, there's three new ones and then an Apex version of an existing one. Mm. Um, okay. I mean, that's a little disappointing okay. considering like Frozen Wilds had like 10 new species, um, mm. including the bear. I don't think the frog compares to the bear. Uh, was the bear? I think the frog's pretty cool. I think the frog might be one of my new favorite right. machines. I, I, th- I think the frog is, they could have done better than the frog. Uh, but I think, I think the bear was also just so fucking No, whales. It looked like there was whalers, like whaling ships that were like pulling in like machine whales or something. Uh, well, no, that was, that was like the Loch Ness monster one that Mm. was in the base game. Um, Gotcha. I, I forget what they're called, but there's, they're in there. Oh, thank God. Crispy's back and we lost Brad. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Price we had to pay. Crispy, are you still with us? I'm here. What happened? Uh, well, Brad froze and bugged out, and you were already gone. Oh, so, Chris war tales. Are you back, Brad? Are you officially back? I'm back, man. My internet's been like so shit. Sh- okay. Shitty lately, fucking. Spectrum. All right. Cool, cool, cool. We're back. All right. Let's. I never stopped my recording. So yeah. I don't know war tales. You know, if you're into stuff like Mountain Blade and turn-based tactics, Nick. Um, I think this game might be for you. Oh, this, is, what, this is one of those games that I can't, I can't even, I can't even like, I shouldn't even bother saying, oh, this looks pretty cool. Cause Brad will just be like, no, Nick, no, this is not for no, you. I, I mean, I mean, it's not, it's not, but it's not like something that's like overly complex or anything either. It, it's just, it's a game where you're kind of building up a band of mercenaries and it's very open and it's all about, okay, th- they have wages there there's mouths to feed i i it, it might feel really good to like hire a bunch of people because you're going to be stronger in battle but if you can't like you know you know keep up with their feeding them and keeping them happy and keeping them well equipped then what's the fucking point you're just throwing away money and it's sort of about that econ- economy and that progression and exploring the world and all this stuff i mean it's a really good one of i mean it's just really good at all of those things and mm-hmm. you know it, it's, it's Revixi is asking if you did the adaptive or explore mode. I don't know what that was alluding. Okay, to. so this this is a good one. I think it was a lot of this has been an early access for a long time. When it launched, the difficulty was all like kind of scaling based. So no matter how much more powerful you were making your band of mercenaries, all your encounters were kind of scaling with you, right? Which kind of mm-hmm. feels a little weird in a game where sort of that progression of your mercenary of your band is so like is sort of everything is the loop of the game. So it feels a little weird that no matter how far you get ahead, the game's always keeping up with you. So they later put in a mode where it's region based, where if you go to this part of the world, it's going to be a lot harder. And this part of the world, you know, might be easier. So it's you the explore you sort of, mode, the I would, explore I would imagine. Mode, which is what I chose, which is what I chose. I feel like for a true, like open ended open world, like RPG game, you don't want scaling difficulty. You know, it goes back right. to like, you know, oblivion or whatever, right? Like it feels weird. If you're I want to feel that push then... when I wander into an area that's that's char- that's exactly, more challenging, exactly, or and, 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 stronger than exactly. I am. Exactly, and when I'm fighting, you know, a, a few rats, I don't want it to feel, uh, you know, w- once I'm a god of a mercenary band, this little group of rats is still kicking my ass because the game scaled with me. You know, I, I don't like how that feels, but here, well, there are like crazy plague rats that. <laughs> are are pretty horrifying. I, I I took out this this plague rat nest and a couple of my guys got bit and they're like, you need to like cure this before their next rest, and um or they're gonna turn. And I'm like, okay, but but your guys they have to sleep, and if, and if you keep pushing them without sleeping, you're like fucking ponies will die that are carrying all your shit. So I'm trying to hoof it back to town before everyone just falls asleep in place, uh, so I can get this this curative to cure them of this rat plague before they have to go to sleep. And I just barely made it, but it was kind of intense. Um, so yeah, it's War Tales. It's good. People should play it, especially top critics on Open Critic according to <laughs> OpenCritic.com because. You know, we oh, need more I can't, review scores. I can't I mean, wait PC for the day when I finally, 
I can't wait for the re- the day when it finally just switches over and we you get just that you get one extra review and all of a sudden you're on the board. It's gonna be like the, the thing is hallelujah. I talking about, it. I think it's gonna happen. There's our, there, I think there are. It, it it's gonna take a while, but I think you're gonna see enough reviews trickle in where people are interested. People are hearing about the game and they're like, oh, I'll play this and oh, I'll review it. There are reviews out there. They're just not even on Open Critic yet. And you know, I'm listening. I mean, to, like you said, it is a big game. I, there's so two different podcasts I listen to that I, I heard talk about this game just randomly, you know. Yeah. So you know, I feel like that's enough to where people are gonna, you know, finally get some reviews in for this game, and we'll see. I mean, I'm not too worried about an open critic, but you know, it's not gonna like give me crazy points even when it does finally chart. So, but whatever, who cares? Who gives a shit? Uh, it's a cool game. Yeah. Scores, lack of scores aside, it's a really cool game. And if you like any of the things I said, uh, there I, said, play it. I think it looks and pretty people cool. Like it. I mean, you, you might not be able to look at professional reviews, but look at like steam reviews. There's a ton of them and people like the game. So i um, sorry that IGN doesn't want to play it. They're just <laughs> stupid. Uh, God damn it. Probably because they're all playing them. Zelda, to be honest. I'm sure they That's... already have Zelda. So. Oh, that... <laughs> wouldn't that be funny if just like none of the games coming out in this little like window of time are being reviewed promptly because everybody's just so you focused can't... on playing Zelda. <sighs> You can recruit wild animals. It's oh whatever. I don't I don't want to get into the weeds. That's not the point. But this is a really cool game. There's a lot of stuff you do can do, and it's it's really fun. All right. If you like that sort of thing. Yeah. No, it looks rad. It looks rad. All right. Let's wrap it up with the four player minute, everybody. Uh, I'm gonna let Brad start us off per usual. You know how it works. Oh, Go. sure. Yeah. As my four player minute, I will say some sad news. Uh, one of the podcasts where mm. I did hear some War Tales conversation was Waypoint Radio, which is a podcast I listened to for a long time since the birth of that site. Um, and it was a website that was started anymore. about six years ago by like Austin Walker and Patrick Klepik and those guys. And uh, I've listened to their podcast ever since. And there was a really good site, really a lot of really good articles. And of course, the podcast was really good. And Vice, there were the Vice Gaming podcast and slash gaming section of their site and vice laid them all off today and that's really unfortunate because they're just talented people good writers and i don't know where they're all gonna land but i mean literally i was listening to an episode of waypoint i think they put out a couple episodes a week um while when i found out this news and it's very very unfortunate You know, if it wasn't for Waypoint, I would have never found out about like Horizons Gate and a lot of other really cool games that, you know, smart, cool people play. And damn it. Fuck. Damn it, Brad. It, now you're just going to have to just a up and be a smart, cool person yourself. Game. Well, I am. Y'all just don't <laughs> care about the games I bring up. <laughs> I care um, about them. God damn it. Um, yeah. So it's it's unfortunate. Games media in that in it, that form feels unsustainable. Like it felt inevitable, right? You know, you I hear I hear about you know layoffs at places like Fanbyte, it, it, in you know which happened I think last year, and it just seems like okay, well, like they're coming for everyone, right? You know, like Giant Bomb, like like none of these. I mean, it's like I said in Discord earlier today. Gonna, it, I know it sucks. It's terrible, obviously, but every time something like this happens, it just makes me go, you know, kind of thank God we just did our own thing <laughs> and it never became like a job because well. holy shit. I mean, I, it, you know, obviously other places have made it work, but like like in P- Patrick Klepek's tweet today, he said, you know, six years is, a, is an eternity in media and stuff. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. God damn, we've been going for however many years now and it's just like the only reason that's even possible is because we do this as a hobby and nothing else yeah it just wouldn't be sustainable unfortunately yeah so yeah fucking sucks um but yeah it's a bummer i guess it's not great to end on a sad note but i mean maybe i'll say some happy do you think that like a new podcast will be born from this from uh i mean that always seems to happen right like an easy allies rebirth I mean, yeah, there's like a billion of them, right? It always happens, right? Like even, you know, some of some of the worst ones leads to sometimes, you know, twice as many podcasts or whatever, right? Yeah, it happens. Uh, so we'll see, you know, I'm sure these people will bounce back. I mean, I mean, I'm still reeling from like when Austin Walker left Waypoint because he was like the main reason I listened. And now he doesn't do anything because he he doesn't do any podcasts because he's like, you know, is like high up at a game studio, and I guess is that's he at Supergiant or who am I thinking of? 
No, no, no. He's not super giant. He's sort of like, was that the birth of a new studio that has oh. yet to ship a game, but he's like their creative director or something. But, you know, he does a lot of... I don't um, think Brick Kasabin, who, who is oh, super yeah, giant Brick now. Oh, yeah, Brick Kasabin. Yeah, he's been in games yeah. development for fucking decades. But, yeah. Um, no, 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 no. Austin Walker. You don't know Austin Walker? No, I, I know who Austin Walker... You said he's oh, at a oh. game studio. My brain went to Greg Sabin, but I was like, that doesn't sound right. Yeah. But he still does a lot of... Um, uh, tabletop, uh, uh, you know, uh, hosts, uh, friends at the table, look into friends at the table if you like that sort of thing. Um, yeah, that's all. That's all for me. All righty. Uh, Chris Davis. Okay. I mean, uh, my final thought or four player minute this week is just me really starting to sweat about my computer. Um, built in 2017. Still a great machine, can play a lot of stuff, but a lot of stuff coming out now is just well beyond even the minimum specs of what is required. Um, that Shadows of Doubt thing was ridiculous. Shadows of Doubt, I was going to say, like that's, I cannot believe that game wants a 3070 to be recommended minimum. spec. What? what? Or is that recommended? or Yeah. 3070, that just means they can't optimize their shit. What the fuck? Uh, also Redfall, I can't play minimum spec. Uh, and just like, it's, it's you real. You don't have minimum in. spec for Redfall? What, what do you, what do you, really? what are you rocking? I'm running <laughs> a 7,700 K processor with a 1080 Ti. Oh, that's not, that's it not was... enough for minimum. No, no, that's, they want, they want sorry. a 2070 for minimum. It might be time. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, and I'm it really feeling feel the, like it's time. Yeah. I mean, six years on it. I mean, I, I do need to upgrade, but like, I just didn't want to do it right now. So, uh, I'm probably going to upgrade in August or September when the next, uh, round of Intel processors come out and hopefully the prices continue to drop on everything else. Like it's, it's been amazing to see the SSDs just drop in price precipitously. There's a sale all the time on them, which is great. I don't think I'm going to be might... playing Starfield on my 1080. <laughs> I think I might be getting a second SSD for my machine. Dude, at some dude, point. Which of y'all have old um, old cards that y'all don't use anymore? Because uh, I don't I don't think Starfield's going to run on my 1080. I had uh, oh well, my last one was a 1080 as well. Never mind. Oh. Yeah, I can't. Help I gave my I, I gave my 1080 to a friend who needed it. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sure I'm, it'll run. I mean, sure, but like, if I'm going to play a game on PC, I want to play to its theoretical best potential. So like, I, I don't want to be like 1080p. So you haven't been playing PC games for six years? The only PC game I've been playing <laughs> is a game from 1994. That's all. Yeah. And that's, that's irresponsible. And that's, that's TIE <laughs> that Fighter. Seems irresponsible. TIE hey, Fighter, hey. huh? TIE Fighter. TIE Fighter. I'm not on I'm, my top ten list of all game the, the greatest I games know. of all time. And it's also the best Star Wars game ever made. So Carlos was in chat asking me which friend I gave my 1080 to. And let me tell you, I got into our Discord and asked if anybody in this group needed a 1080. And I don't remember hearing from Carlos. Maybe that's because I asked in the meetings channel and he was like screaming from his channel that he needs it. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> but I just didn't notice because he won't leave his fucking channel. Um, Who sorry. was it? Man. Was it Joel? It was Joel. Yeah. I mean, Joel had like a, I didn't. Joel had like a six something, like a six sixty or something. I forgot what, what it was. What is Joel playing? What is Joel playing on his PC? Warhammer. Joel, Joel plays a no. He plays a lot of. Uh, uh, what's the what's the war team? Like, sh, like Total War, like. Shogun. Yeah, Warhammer, oh, yeah. Total War, Shogun. Yeah, Total he War. plays a lot of that stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So, but yeah, dude, my my PC build, my last PC build was before Henry was born. <laughs> Holy shit! He that turned. It might be time. time <laughs> it might be time. Um, Although you right. are rocking no, a Steam a... Deck, so like essentially you do kind of have a upgrade you've been playing with. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna upgrade my my PC anytime soon. It's just it costs too much. I'll I I think Xbox you're. Before I, I think Henry's gonna be a teenager before you up, upgrade your machine. Could uh, be. Could be. Well, you never know. That. Yeah. Uh, crispy. 
it's more just that I never sit in front of my PC anymore, which is why I'm not going to upgrade. Well, uh, my my dearth of PC games continues. I pre-ordered Jedi Fallen or Jedi Survivor, Survivor <laughs> on PS5 because apparently the PC port sucks. So. Mm. Well, that's, so here's a bad year for PC ports. A bad year for PC ports. Well, here's a guy. question. Here's a question. Like what I have heard, uh, albeit not much. I did listen to Kind of Funny's thing about Star Wars, and they were very upfront about the fact that like their review codes came with a long, long list of stuff that, that said you'll be playing this game without the Day Zero patch, and these are all the problems. Mm. So like, and and that patch doesn't drop. Didn't drop until today. Mm. So I would imagine that mm-hmm. saying the PC port is a mess is saying the PC port without the day zero patch is a mess. I'm not saying it's oh, going to fix everything. Yeah, but, I'm sure. But it might be a more stable. It might be more stable than you're giving it credit for. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I could be talking out of my ass right now. But uh, wait till you see the clouds, though. It's worth it. Yeah, the clouds. Can't wait to see what kind of clouds they've got. Um, also, earlier when I was talking yes. about, <laughs> oh, yeah, the... these reapers ain't gonna get me, come get me. Uh, <laughs> when I was talking about Armored Core earlier, and I was like, it's time, I think the people are ready, I wasn't just saying that, like, I wasn't just saying that out of nowhere, I, I think, you know, like, I've been doing a lot of, uh, trolling around on on steam late at night because like i can't think of anything to play because the only things i'm playing are cyberpunk which i'm like about over with and like magic the gathering and like a little bit of vampire survivor and i just need like new hotness like i need some pizzazz and i was looking around on steam and i keep looking at mech games and you know what there's a lot of people being really generous to mech games for having like the bare minimum of like gameplay or like customization features or something like that like it it feels like it feels like there's a hunger out there in the world and any halfway competent mech game can come out and just like fucking hit it out of the park yeah i I don't know i don't know maybe i'm crazy and i know earlier i said i don't give a fuck what these nerds think and that is true but if this is an indication of 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 like a a growing unrest in society, a growing need for good mech games, mech games in general, because mech games are the best, and they, no other genre will uh, ever surpass them. Mm, no, that that, that, that is factually has been proven by science, Nicholas Henderson. Okay, I like okay. my mech games as well, and there's one big one coming out this year with all yeah. the customization and the chunky mechs that me and you love. It's called the Front Mission 2 Remake, and I can't wait. Hey, Crispy, did you know that Bioware made a mech game one time? Oh, God. Are you talking about Anthem? No. No, like in the fucking 90s. Like, like an actual oh, mech game. I thought he was making an Anthem joke. No. That's, and I was about to be like, that's just cruel. <laughs> It was called Shattered Steel, and it was actually really fucking cool. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I used to play Mech Warrior back in the day, like Mech Warrior Two, I think it was. Um, you didn't play was... Mech Warrior Two? No, I did. I I loved Mech Warrior Two. You got the I fucking should... disc that came what? with your fucking Windows machine. I had it too. I get it. What everyone had? What Mech Warrior I, I, you guys? Whatever. You know, this is all well, just I talk. Mech Warrior. Huh? This is all just talk, but there's a deep ache in society's soul for a good mech game. And this August, I think we're going to get it. All right. I, I think hope, it's going to score I, really well. Yeah, well. Fantasy critic aside, yeah. you know, I hope you lose, but I hope you're right. I hope that game we'll is fantastic. We'll all be mech fans by the end of the year. We'll yeah. Be hung- we'll, we'll be hungering for more. We'll be all be sh- streaming Hawkins. We'll all be like, year. we'll all be <laughs> oh watching. God. Wait a second. Did that oh, game we can, ever come we can out? watch Gundam? Wait, wait, it came wait, wait, out for like a hot yes, minute, then closed. Dude. Yes, oh my god, it was a free-to-play competitive game. It it yeah. came and went. Oh my god, I completely forgot about that I game. I played we? that game like when I first started doing podcasts with four player. 
holy shit. Ha- I, for- I hadn't heard that name in years. Okay. Hawkin right. lasted just just about as long as Lawbreakers, if that gives you an idea. Hot damn. Okay. My four-player minute starts now. I know I was going to talk about Jedi Fallen Order during my four-player minute, but I think I got that all out of my system at the very, very beginning. But I will still talk about Star Wars for a hot second because Jedi Fallen Order made me realize something. And it's something I finally, I think I'm comfortable with. Because, like I said... I'm admitting I like Star Wars. (laughs) No, 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 no. I mean, here, Brad. It's part of it. I've been a huge Star Wars fan for most of my life, to be totally honest. We all have. We all have. I know, I know. But like, you know, I felt really, really burned by Rise of Skywalker. And I think I may have let that kind of just like that negativity seep a little too far down into my into my my soul. Right. Right. Um, And I I let it poison the well a little bit because Mm -hmm. there is a lot of Star Wars out there and some of it's good. Some of it's not so good. And I think I'm finally comfortable with that notion. Like, Jedi Fallen Order was really fucking good. Like I said earlier, probably now ranking among my favorite Star Wars things. And I'm unexpectedly now super fucking excited to play Jedi Survivor. Um, and I got, it got You're me back in... play KOTOR 2? I booted up Andor. Dude, I tried playing KOTOR 2. It was my machine. It was my machine that fucking wouldn't let me. I was so mad. Um, you didn't meet the minimum c- requirement. No, it just wouldn't run on my computer. I don't know what to tell you. It just could not get it to run. You yeah, could play Tie Fighter. Uh, I I would like to play Tie Fighter. I you know no, you there's I have a bunch of Star Wars games uh, on my PC that I I've never played, um, and I would like to play more of them. And you know, it just made me realize that like, man, you know what? The Rise of Skywalker may have been a real wet fart. But man, we still had the Last Jedi, which I fucking adore, and uh, uh, fight and me, still... you fucking nerds! Fight me. <laughs> we still have that original trilogy, which is still brilliant. And you know what? And you know what? Like my this newfound love for Jedi Fallen Order inspired me to finally say, "All right, you're fine, you fuckers. I'm gonna watch Andor." And I started watching Andor, and it's fucking great. And uh, you know, Mandalorian, pretty damn good. And you know what? The prequels may have a lot of fucking problems, but like Order no, 66. No, 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 no. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> Order 66, which is the, the the which has become kind of this like this foundation for a lot of really good stories in the Star Wars universe, was easily the the, the most the best thing to come out of that prequel trilogy. Um I don't I don't know what you're talking about, and I've seen the prequels. Order 66 is the, the order that the Emperor sent out to, say, kill all the Jedi. So, like, he turned all the clones against the Jedi, murdered all the, the younglings. That's what turned Anakin into Darth, Darth Vader and all that shit. He so says like, Order like, 66. This it's is called or- the, Order. Order 66. Yes, Order 66 yes. is what it's called. And, and because it George is, it Lucas is the, wrote this. Yes. And, it, it, it like, just that whole... If that event, which may have been precipitated by a lot of really melodramatic, aw- awkward acting, was a really cool moment in the history of Star Wars. And damn, I really appreciate it a lot more now, having played Jedi Fallen Order. I'm super stoked to play Survivor this weekend. And yeah, it's just it just made me realize, you know what? There's some bad Star Wars stuff out there, and that's cool. That's okay. What about Everspa- How come none of y'all play Everspace 2? Any of you fucks? Chris Davis. That seems like a Chris Davis game or, or a crispy game. No one wants to play Everspace 2? Am I going to have to do it myself? Like Thanos You're going to have to do it. You're going to have to do it but yourself. I'm, I'm never sitting in front of my fucking PC, y'all. Maybe you, that's all, like a you, all y'all have problem. these expensive PCs. You don't even fucking play them. Come on. It's on Game sounds Pass. Like a, sounds like a it's personal on problem. Game Pass. I, okay. Hmm. Can I wrap this podcast up? Oh, oh, sure. God, please. please do. Thank you guys for listening tonight. No, it's on Game Pass. Never mind. Thank you guys for listening tonight. Uh, Fourplayernetwork.com is, of course, our website. We'll be back every Thursday, as we normally are, to record podcasts. I will say this. I'm going to be out of town the week after next. I have a feeling that'll probably be like a trailer talk week or something. I don't don't know. Brad might do something. We'll see. But um, Thursday, Thursday nights, the show. Next week, we'll talk about Survivor. 
Jedi Survivor, among other things. Maybe Redfall. That comes out on Monday or Tuesday or something. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm fucking worried. That That's the other part of my four-player minute, man. That's, I'm about to like, ugh. I, I feel bet, like I'm about I to bet get it's going to be better than everyone's expecting. I hope you're right. God, I hope you're right. I think um, people are shitting on Arcane and not giving them the chance that they have rightly earned. No, no, no. I, I, I have a lot of faith in Arcane. It's more of like, I'm worried about the, the state in which it's going to launch, and I'm worried that's going to drag the reviews down, even if what's even if they can build it into something better once you, if you launch poorly it's hard to dig yourself out of yeah that but hole. you're Anyways, you're, you're framing your your entire apprehension around you know the fantasy critic thing and really you should be no, framing it around whether you're going to enjoy the game or not dude of course i'm going to play the game i already have it installed like i'm gonna play that's what i'm talking about like people think we're playing with the fantasy critic like we only care about the fucking scores we've just guys i need i need people to listen and hear this we have literally just gamified the podcast that's all we've done of course, we're going to keep playing these games. We don't give a shit about the scores. We're going to play about. We're going to play the games. We're going to talk about them. We're going to tell you what we think about them. But yes, I'm the scores. Well, Brad's not going to play it, but I'm going to fucking play it. <laughs> and I think because Crispy's going to play it. It's a co-op game, and I don't play multiplayer games. Crispy's going to play it, right, Crispy? No, I'm going to play it. And Chris Davis is going to play, play it longer than you are, because he's a fucking weirdo. But anyways, because I can't play it on computer. If I see reviews that say it's a damn good single player game, I'll play it. All right, fair enough. We'll they're find they're out next week. Oh, pray for pray for me. Anyways, uh fourplayernetwork.com guys, of course, uh if you want to find us in between shows, discord.gg/fourplayer, please hang out there and let us know. If you're new, pop into that introduction channel and say hi. Let us know what you're playing. We'd love to hear from you. Uh in the meantime, be good to each other. Play video games. Have a wonderful night. Peace out.